Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Uh, Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. Uh, and here we are in the victory lap. I brought the player ship, uh, not the player ship, the victory ship, uh, back to Nalvis orbit. Uh, we'll be just keeping this here for posterity, I suppose. Um, and I also continued laying out some solar panels at Electra. Uh, we've now got just about 60 gigawatt of spare power here. So we're on our way to Electra with a dimensional anchor. We've already got one at Calidus Orbit, our home star. Um, but we need, after I place this one, we need to place another six in order to get Boanestra working, it would appear. Um, when we boot Boanestra up, uh, it takes 10 gigawatt initially. It appears to take another 10 gigawatt for each one of these things, uh, so we had to make a very large power plant for that. We've finished uh, building that. Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, so we have our power plant finished. It is four sets of this monstrosity, uh, which theoretically can do 24 gigawatts each. Um, but I think realistically, with the fluid mechanics, it's going to be a little bit less. However, since our target is, I hope, 90 gigawatts, um, this thing should be able to manage. Should. Um, I also had to update this uh, drop-off point for our supply ship for um, ice and antimatter canisters. Congrats on the win, thank you. Um, basically, I added a layer of chests here because the logic says either the spaceship is empty for, for both of these. Well, let me put it another way. For each resource, either the spaceship is empty or the drop-off is full. Um, and we do that for both resources. But um, I also had circuitry here preventing... Uh, we were reading from these uh, buffer chests to check the second condition. Um, but the items were never getting there while the ship was here because we don't put this stuff into the robot network from the requester chests while the ship's here. Because uh, the static requests on the buffer chests will just bring them back into the ship. So now we've got set requests, uh, just static regular chests, and then finally, after the, which we can read, and um, finally after the ship leaves, we shove it all into the robot network. Um... Vondo, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How was your stream today? Whiskers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Post victory, success, yes indeed. Welcome, Veldak and Stink E. Good to see you guys. Uh, good to see you again, Veldak and Whiskers. Napthor, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Stream went well. Nice. Uh, yeah, uh, Whiskers, if you didn't catch it. Uh, here is our victory ship. It was successful. Uh, and it was shockingly close. I'm not sure at exactly what point a power fluctuation will cause the victory condition on the Nexus to reset. But our... Power fluctuations from uh, fluid 
mechanic issues were gradually getting worse. Um, and basically what, uh, what I started with designing this was, um, eight high temp turbine generators just for the sake of symmetry. And then finally, okay, we really don't need number eight. Um, and looking at this, I thought it would be fine in terms of fluid flow. We've got like steam produced here, goes in here, steam produced here, goes in here. Water goes straight back into the system up this way and so on. Uh, it turned out this becoming just a little bit lopsided. Um, and the fact that we needed uh, what, 6.25 gigawatts out of 7? Um, it was just enough to very slowly drain, uh, like, the excess steam, um, that we had produced while power consumption was below maximum. So, the steam over here had to be pushed, I added a pump here, had to be pushed over this way. Um, we also had to pump the water back this way somewhat, because eventually this, uh, th these two heat exchangers over here were getting water starved. Uh, maybe it wouldn't have been as bad if I'd... Oh, this should not be full. Oh, I see what happened here. I had this manually connected last time. Um, yeah. Maybe I should have left with more water as well, but I didn't want to risk blocking the recycling. Um, it was shockingly close. Well, it, it's hard to tell exactly how close it was, but we were on the path to power collapse. Like, not total collapse, just, you know, not being able to keep up the Nexus, which was 99% of our power consumption. Had the same question? Evil Pla, Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What's the plan for today? Uh, today we spam solar panels some more and throw down anchors. So that we can do, I mean, I would, I, I want to say so that we can finish playing with Foenestra today. However, the amount of time it takes just to lay out enough power for these anchors, um, I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, but we'll do our best. Speaking of which, let me go back to Nervous Orbit where we've already got some of our construction ships on the way back to resupply. Um, I think, depending on where they are... Also, I meant to check... Yeah, we're running a test on this thermofluid resupply ship as well. Um, we've got some... Cons here they are, construction ship. ETA six minutes. I think what I will do um, is build some more construction ships before this one gets back. So let's grab this blueprint right here and go. Are we getting all of our fluids? Water, yes. Antimatter, no. Okay. I just need to put this down here. And where did that blueprint just go, actually? I'm pretty sure this is it. We are going to open up the great Foenestra portal then? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I gather that is a different victory condition. Um, 
I mean, for all of it, uh, for all the effort it takes to get it to boot up and work, I would hope so. Oh, I probably could have just stopped using these. Oh, wow, I literally could have just stopped using these. Oh, no. I could have saved a lot of time here. Just deconstruct this stuff and place the anchor down. We've got uh, 84 gigawatts and change of power being wasted here. One job, indeed. Uh, yeah, so we need to power up six more um, anchors. I'm heading for Regulus for the next one. And that is a really good start. That's like probably the best uh, free real estate I've seen attached to a star or something. Um, Regulus. I need to do the usual uh, defenders and all that. Media defense installations. Make sure those are one tile apart. How many is this? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Seems good. Um, our construction ships should have media defense installation ammo. They do. Okay. I might not even bother setting up a regular resupply for these ones. Um, we'll just try and get them all done fast enough that we won't need it. And the other thing I want to do, although it's a lot more difficult to do it in-game as opposed to sandbox, is try and finish designing our dispatch system, where next playthrough we're going to take advantage of Foe and Estra to shorten the distance between destinations. Um... Uh, so basically what we have is, imagine this is Nalvis or wherever our home base is. Uh, we get a, like a generic ship, comes here with resources, drops everything off, goes, uh, is dispatched back to um, Foenestra. That part's all pretty straightforward. Um... We'll probably use uh, logistic bots and set requests. Um, unless I go for uh, unless I go for using belts next time, I don't really like the look of using belts though. I might just turn off bot attrition next time. Um, but yeah. We're basically going to have Bonestra as the destination, and when spaceship is empty, spaceship launch. Um, go to Foenestra. Sydney Kenson von Ice T. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Now, why do we need? I don't remember why we would need a transmitter at Nalvis. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, so this one is transmitting... We're probably going to do it in, in terms of stacks. How many stacks of whatever resource... Um, I could I could just send all of the different resources on one signal transmitter. But I think it's going to get a bit more 
complicated if we do that. Um, let's see. When the ship arrives, we pulse. Uh, oh yeah, the steel chest signal from the ship is going to be how many stacks the ship can carry. So that we can have an upgrade path for ships where it's not going to throw this system off. Um, so we're going to pulse a negative of how many stacks of resources uh, this ship carries. I like the stack idea as well because when we get bots occasionally not perfectly filling chests, uh, it's quite rare but it does happen. It's not going to confuse the system, I hope. Uh, so we're going to assume a full ship is here. Um, we're going to pulse negative x many stacks uh, uh, to Foenestra on the channel of resource whatever. So let's say um, let's say Narvis iron plate um, I'm just going to use iron plate for an example. It feels a bit easier somehow. Uh, whatever we've got in storage in this place for iron plate is on the green wire constantly sent. T divided by negative 100. I'm just wondering maybe wood crate might be safer as the zero chance of it being in the logistic network. Wood crate. Oh. Uh, we're not going to be reading... We're not going to be reading the logistic network to get this figure, though. Grizzly Ginger? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Rubber Band Rambo, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, this is already becoming like having to having to figure out uh, my old code. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to design this in Sandbox. But we can still save some time by thinking about it ahead of time. Just looking around watching people play Factorio, as you do. Six minutes till we get back to Nalvis Orbit. Do I have anchors being... Oh, I do. Okay, cool. Um, we've got three more here. I remember now, I was manually bringing in the catalogs and tesseracts here. Um, so we don't drag too many tesseracts away from signs. Uh, but yeah, this is literally half of the remainder of the anchors we need to make. Uh, and before we make them, we need to spam out a whole lot of solar panels. Monstrosity? I made a giant rover in KSP that I called the Monstrosity Rover. It actually, uh... Actually made for a pretty epic landing on the moon. What was I calling this thing? Construction Ship sh uh, 6? Uh, and are they full already? They are full already. Oh, uh, maybe missing some flat solar panels, actually. Um, where are we requesting? Don't tell me I stopped requesting flat solars here. No, 1.6k. Um, however, if we're only picking them up with short trains, that might take a little while. 
Hmm. We have long trains that are able to pick up flat solars from here. Oh. Oh, we're actually... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Regular solar panels are out. Uh, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Regular solar panels. Um, I think I might know why. Earlier I had to fix the supply of cargo rocket sections down on Narvas because I, I was in the process of, uh, defuncting the old, um, cargo rocket section production. Um, and basically has been broken for a while. And now we're demanding way too much because we're trying to catch up with cargo rocket sections. Maybe it would actually be better if I just... arrange for solar panels to be delivered by shuttle instead. I think we've got a couple of spare slots here. Yeah, I think that might be best. Where are we putting the flats, uh, the regular solar panels into a cargo rocket? Thank you for the follow, Grizzly Ginger. Is there a way to include the station resupply materials, media defense, ammo, water, etc., in the Foenestra routing setup? Oh yeah, definitely. Or would you have a separate resupply ship? Um, I think I'd probably have them get resupplied at Nalvis or Nalvis Orbit, whatever our main base is going to be. Um... Where, oh where, are we putting flat solar panels into cargo rockets? We didn't remove it and forget, surely. Oh, here it is. It's full. Wait, what? Launch trigger none? Okay, I don't know how that happened. That was a much easier fix than I was expecting. We've also got, like, three train loads. That's probably another cargo rocket full of solar panels here. Alright. That was easy. Uh, but anyway, we need to get... Hold on. Does that mean there's no... There's 1.6k flat solar panels here right now. So they should be able to be supplied from the mall to here. But it's quite the bottleneck with the short trains from there these days. Um, I would like... Hmm. What if we make these step filters... And we just put solar panels in here. Wait, no, there's no reason. I, that, that was derpy. We, we can collect the flat solar panels from here directly. What I was thinking of doing is... Um, I don't even need these to be f filter inserters, do I? These are purple chests. I'm just going to change them to blacklist nothing. Uh, and we're going to request tier 2 flat solar panels here. Uh, so it's 160 times 2 times 10... 3,200 for a single train load. 
Um, wait a sec. I just realized... It's going to take a minute for this to be a problem. But I just realized... Oh no, I remember. This goes over here. Okay, cool. That's fine. What have we got? One, two, three. We can easily do three train loads of storage for space platform scaffolding over here. That is connected by the green wire, so we know what we've actually got, more or less. Um, 3.2k is one train load of flat solars. Considering we're doing less than two chests. Um, for each. It's actually more than two chests. Uh, let's call it two train loads of flat solar panels that we want here. We just need to connect these like so. Flat solar panel 2 only. Alright. So there should already be flat solars on the way. Fantastic. That didn't take long at all. With the stack size of 20, I guess it's not surprising. Especially when it's right next to the depot for pickup. Maybe next time as well, instead of, like, centralized... Well, not centralized, but instead of big depots like this, maybe I could try to incorporate... Uh, it would be overkill to have, like, a depot at every pickup station. Or, like, right next to every pickup station. But maybe I could have something a bit more evenly distributed. Uh, I do need to feed a pulse. To get these to input. There we go. It's not going to copy the name of the ship, right? I don't think it does that, no. Little pulse to get started. Fantastic. Alright, so we've got heat. We've got water. It's, the water's looking a bit full, actually. Possibly. 24,546. Okay, no. It should be fine. Um... This should be 24k. I guess we'll wait for the rest of that uranium. It's a bit overkill. Alright, so which star were we going to? What's it called again? Regulus. Regulus. Rigel. S. Something. Do you have a speed signal? Yes, you do. Uh, so this thing should move on its own without me pressing engage even on its first launch. And we don't have to actually go to a separate surface to check that. If I keep this thing open... That's a different ship. It didn't come back. It's fine. Uh, let's see. Speed is 90, 94, 98. Fantastic. Off you go as well. Nice. Uh, come to think of it, those two probably haven't reached 500 degrees Celsius, but... They're running off of solar power um, for the moment. 
should be fine. Worst case, they'll slow down a bit before the heat pipes receive 500 degrees Celsius. Alright, and I want to make two more construction ships, but we have a few waiting their turn to get resupplied here first. So we should be able to send out ships to build all of the solar panels and scaffolding for two anchors at the same time, I think. That'll definitely make things a bit quicker. Just waiting for the bots to stop moving before we send those two again. Uh, we already have some construction ships here, right? Yes, good. Fantastic. Um, let me figure out exactly where I want to... I guess it doesn't matter too much. Um, I can always move them. So I'll anchor this one about here. The other one's going to automatically clamp to it, or not. I actually got rid of that for the moment. Just turn that signal off. Alright, so we need a request chest. Um, some inserters. Oh. One off. And... Over here as well, please. Uh, and I think I'll just... Fill this chest, thank you very much. As much as we can. And then begin spamming solar panels as quickly as possible. Uh, I should have done this first. Actually. Hopefully we don't get too much trouble from that. Actually, I could just delete these tile ghosts and then undo, and there should already be a bot assigned to building this supercharger. So now all of our bots are going to recharge there instead of queuing around the radar construction pylon. It'd be really nice if if we could have a limit on bots queuing for a certain charger, then we could just have, like, one charging port here and only, like, two or three of them or something could queue for this one, and then they'd automatically all be going for this. But, alas, um, I can see why they would set the robots using this recharge port off by default. Unfortunate. Um, let's put another one of these over here. And... Uh, I think the bots will go for this recharging port if we expand out this way anyway. Also, where's our other ship? hasn't anchored yet because I didn't tell it to clamp to the same spot. Oh, if I do that, let's just put it here. Whoops, it's fine. 
Is there a way to include the... Oh, wait, I answered that, sorry. All right, ETA, two seconds. That's what I like to see. We are 27% on teleportation, just kidding. It's actually another 5k. It's actually only 50% more. I thought it would be at least another 100% to get the second research done here. This thing only exists to unlock this, at least for now. Alright, so let's go grab our anchors. I think I'll keep them uh, in this ship from now on. Where's my remote? Actually, if I get three more anchors built, I can forget about having to remember. So we need 16, 24 Naquim, uh, 24 Tesseracts, and this is actually saturated. Is the train coming for Tesseracts? No. Are, are we actually, like, we're actually totally saturated on Tesseracts? That's cool. Wasn't expecting to see that. Well, that makes it very simple to pick up 24 Tesseracts. And then we don't have to keep this here anymore. Alright. Um, the other stars... Uh, did we use Vazanus yet? Yeah, yeah we did. So we've got Calidus, Vazanus, we're going to use Regulus, Regulus. Uh, Hankerus, we've already got some energy beaming, so it's probably easy to expand that. One, two, three, four. Electra and uh, Capellus. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Anglus, we've already got solar panels at... I don't think... Oh, we do have Penthus. Oh, here's one of the old construction ships I forgot about. Uh, with a lot of scaffolding here still. Why don't we take advantage of that? That's going to save a little bit of time. What am I doing? This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Hankerus makes eight. So I think, uh, apart from regulus where we're just getting started uh we've already got stuff set up at all of our all of the stars that we're going to use this might not take as long to finish up as i thought all right please be giving me what is this 15 And 30. We'll take a, a, a couple of extra Tesseracts back to the mall just in case. Since they're so abundant all of a sudden. Mm, I guess every extra Tesseract I stole from there slows down research just a little bit. It's probably fine. Uh, probably bump up the threshold here a bit. We don't need every little increment 
uh, a train delivery for every little increment of research. I think next time I might like to have one big block that deals with all of the science packs so that we... Hmm, all of the space science packs at least so that we don't have to wait on trains to deliver the last little bit. And then we get a smoother... We, we get a much more smooth uh, indication of how quickly we're consuming research that way as well. Alright, you are off to Regulus. Whoops. And I thought there were more ships here. Well, uh, I guess we'll get these two started. Where is this going? Oh, ice. Yeah, that makes sense. This will launch once uh, antimatter canisters and or ice are full here. All right, and then uh, one and a two and a three. And that should be all the anchors we ever need, if this works the way I imagine. We're still waiting on heavy assembly and more quantum processes. That's uh, a little disappointing. Do we still have... We do not have lubricant here. Okay. I actually made this so that we're not requesting lube here. Um, request threshold. Uh, because I wanted to use this station real quick yesterday. Well, not yesterday. Last stream. Wait, that was yesterday, wasn't it? Good grief, everything's blurring together. So we should see Louvre on the way. Fantastic. Uh, might take a little bit longer to get quantum processes. Wait, we've got 10k here. What? What? Oh, the it's the one inserter putting other stuff in. Okay. So, don't tell me. We already had the heavy assemblies. So, I was right. We didn't need more lubricant. Um, by the end of the playthrough. It's fine. I think I can change this back, though, already. Alright. And that's it. That's our six anchors. Uh, let's go put them in the player ship. Um, I guess I need to prevent those from getting thrown in the trash. Unless I want to add a steel chest or something. I'll just put them in this uh, buffer chest here. So 
So let's see. Uh, one of those ships didn't get named. Or there's a typo in it. Uh-oh. Should be headed for Regulus. Construct... Construct-Siton Ship 5. Okay. Good to know. So you are on your way to Regulus Orbit. They're actually all on their way there. Uh, and we've got six of them. Yeah, I was aiming for eight so that we could do two stars at once. But I guess it's fine to just send them all to the same place for the moment. We'll need to do the same thing to kickstart the reactors as last time. Uh, maybe I still have it on the copy-paste. Yeah, I do. There we go. That's a uh, shift and mouse scroll wheel. Goes back and forth through the recent copy-pastes. Same thing for blueprints. A blueprint book. Alright, so anchors go here. I do not see bots coming to steal them. And I was muted, wasn't I? Whoops. It's probably fine. Not really. Um, I actually want... It's hard to even see where the limit of... Just how high up can I put this thing so that the, uh... Pretty high up, actually. Definitely far enough away that the bots won't head for that. When they go to recharge. I should bear this in mind. Next time. So we put our supercharger down as soon as possible. And once that's ordered, we can go ham over here. And that should almost all be under our radar construction pylon range. Oh. Probably should have bought bad that in mind. Oh no. Oh no, this is bad. Oh no. Because we just barely didn't power this uh, supercharger, we've now got an awful lot of bots queuing up to use the radar construction pylon. Hopefully it gets replaced relatively quickly. I'm not going to trust that. Remove tile ghosts. And then we can undo. So 
now something is going to be prioritizing this. I think. Or, or not? Why are we not... Don't tell me, like, one of these ones was set to... Hmm. Can I not get dollies this down? Radar construction pylon does not support moving. Even though substation pylons do. Hmm. Uh... Why don't I just... No, that's not going to work. Alright, fine. We'll remove towel ghosts again. And we need one of these down here, actually. Now it's getting built. Okay. They need so much babysitting. Speaking of which, are the rest of our ships here anytime soon? Uh, one, two, three, and four. Not really. ETA with our anchors is ten minutes. Is anything else breaking right at the end of the game when we think we don't need to touch anything? Only time will tell. Uh, it's There's actually quite a few things we've run out of here. Uh, I guess it's not that surprising. When we build a new construction ship, we fill it up with everything. So these two might take a little while to be finished. Maybe I should have intervened directly while I was had my character physically present. How's our Naquitite flow? Still completely solid by the look of it? This one. There we go. Yep, it's it's the same as ever. Almost perfect. Very consistent. The dips are consistent, it looks like, as well, pretty much. Nice. We'll have those uh, Arco-Link storages. I don't want to say in no time. 10 Arcospheres to make this, we really should tap... I mean, even though it's just going to be sort of victory lap, let's play with this thing a little bit at the end. Maybe we should start getting Arcospheres from somewhere else. How are Arcospheres balancing? Yes, they are. Very, very nicely. I did run into uh, everything was broken here earlier today. Um, but it was just this inserter trying and failing to insert an, uh, an Arcosphere again. So I just turned it around, did this. Yeah, like that. Um, and then everything sorted itself out again. Fantastic, indeed. I think next time, uh, as, as nice as the one big container is, uh, I think I'll use a hybrid of this balancing logic and kind of like what we've got here where we have requested chests that request just one of each Arcosphere um, and a circuit to say don't insert unless we've got exactly what we need Arcosphere wise to start the recipe. Um, so we'll have... I think, uh, I, 
I, I actually think even from the beginning, I would like to have... Well, let's count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, plus 8 is 24. That's kind of a lot to start with. But you get Arcospheres so quickly to begin with. Uh, let's see. All time, Arcosphere. Uh, wish I could see exactly how many Arcospheres this spike is. Um, but suffice to say, it was only like a trip or two before we had significantly more than 24, right? I was thinking maybe we could have exactly one Arcosphere of each type for each input reserved at all times. Why does this have three Thetas sitting there? Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, if we control input instead of output, um, but we make sure that there's always uh, inputs reserved for folding. Um, I think that's a pretty good balance between keeping the maximum number of Arcospheres available and making sure it's responsive and doesn't overload or, or anything like that. It's modular. The brain will work with anything. Yes, indeed. So there will be another playthrough. Did not see the start. Sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't put the start up on, on the YouTubes until until a few people asked for it. My bad. But K2 plus SE plus some other mods, uh, we absolutely will be uploading all of those from the beginning. Galopadam. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and I, with this next playthrough, I'm gonna... Uh, there's a mod I've seen I, I want to try where instead of having to load up a different save to do our sandbox things, we can literally just sort of kind of like pause the game and jump to a different surface. Um... I would really like to design the hell out of things before we build them instead of like slapping stuff together with the stuff that we've actually got in our game. Nice, thank you, no worries. You are most welcome. Uh, let's see, Regulus is looking a lot better now. Um, we could also expand this over this way. I think I calculated we need 20, uh, 20 blocks of these solar panels. Uh, 6,000 over 12. Wait, what? Uh, 12 megawatts times 255 is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, that doesn't... How much have we got here? 7.2 gigawatts. Um, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks times 12 times 255 is going to be 12... Yeah, it's, it's 20 squares. Okay, so I think we'll go for like... 5 by 4, I guess. It'd probably be easiest. Are we running out of scaffolding yet? Nope. Oh. Uh, before I put that down there, we should do this. And 
then we do this. Designing the hell out of things will add even more time to the run. I think it'll actually be net faster to do it like that. Will you do the secret victory too? Is that not what we're doing with Foenestra? Venice Leon. Good to see you again. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I know of... I think I know of uh, two victories. I don't know what to do about the hints, if there are such things, from the mysterious structures. True, if things need to be redone, less that's better. Yeah. Like, uh, I could have saved a ton of time if... I mean, it's a lot harder to do completely blind. Doing it with K2, things are going to... And, and the new update, things are going to be different. But I'm going to have a rough idea of how everything works with space exploration, right? Um, but there's so much... There's so, so many builds where it would have been great if... From the beginning, I could have built them around wide area beacons. Um, if we can make them fit wide area beacons and uh, or basic beacons, uh, that would be pretty neat. Although I think I remember someone said in K2 you can get big buildings on the ground, so that might change things a bit. That would be a great introductory line to use at a, a party. How are Arcospheres balancing? Okay. Uh, where are we? Regulus. Tick Bonnie. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I think we'll go 5 by 4 here. Our last two ships are coming in. Or is it... Not last two, the next two. Nexus Prime is also making more... Wait, what? Oh, Nexus Prime is over here. Oh! How did this happen? We ran out of heat. Uh, why are there bots hovering in here? Does that have anything to do with it? I don't think so. There's no roboports to recharge. We've got water. We've got steam. Uh, well, we don't really have steam. We don't have heat. That's interesting. I added a timer to make sure that this ship never departed without 10,000 degrees of heat. And yet, our carefully measured loop. How is it still heading out? Nexus Prime, it, it, it's gone to Stardust and back. And still had heat left over in the past. But this time... Hmm. I mean, it really doesn't matter. We could just leave it here at this point. But still. Actually, that might not even be true. Uh, interstellar travel data was by far the easiest to get. So we've got a bunch of it. But... I guess it's possible that we run out while we're trying to... what? Oh. Okay. Um... While we're trying to make catalogs... How many, do, how many catalogs do we need now? It's like... 13,000 divided by 2, 6,500-ish, except that's the research pack. 
divide that by 8. We need like 812. Uh, we've got like... Kind of hard to say how much we've got here. We've got a few. Let's see. One interstellar travel data makes one catalog. Um, where are we dropping it off? That's actually... Here it is. We have 1.6k. That could be close. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, I think even if this ship never moves again, um, we've got enough to finish all the research we want. Not to say I won't fix it on the way back from this, though. None of those pylons do bot recharging. I'm pretty sure they don't. They're just regular pylon substations. Yeah, it's just regular island substations. Very weird. Uh, I wonder if we could squeeze... Nope. It's a pity we can't point... I'm pretty sure if we tell this to stop, it's not like we're going to be able to point an energy beam transmitter at it, right? Was it Electra where we had copious extra beam power? Let's set this to energize. What was our... Uh, something prime. Nexus prime. Yeah, we, we can't point... Um, an energy beam transmitter at the ship, even if it stops. Unless it stops at an orbit or something like that. Some other surface. Hmm. Why did it just point down this way? Oh, because I told it to stop? Yeah, it doesn't actually have a destination. I guess the easiest way to get this going again would be to deliver 5k steam. Yeah, I think that's right. We can't put that in barrels or anything, though. There's no solar power out here. The only way I can think to deliver heat uh, above 5,000 is to bring in an antimatter reactor. Am I carrying some? Also, still carrying some tesseracts. Whoops. I am not carrying any antimatter reactors, but I am heading for a destination where one of our construction ships is. Repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so that is one, two, three, four, five. Um, I may as well get them to place what scaffolding they can from this angle.
And then I can just put in some temporary robopots or something. Yeah, that should work. But don't put them in until they've done with scaffolding. Once the scaffolding that they can reach... Uh, actually, no, it should be superchargers or something. And put one of these here. No, I'm, I'm making it more complicated. Let's just let them do what they can from here, and then we'll move the ships down this way. Alright, 2 minutes 30 until we are there. Uh, what else? I don't think there's anything else I can do. Oh, I can test the power supply here. Uh, we have to test it sometime. May as well test it when these are wasting fuel because it's at over 10,000 degrees. Well, 10,000 and it's burning fuel from initial boot. And we're online. Theoretical maximum power production is 96.6 .6 gigawatts. In reality, it is a bit short of that because fluids in this game are a nightmare. Even though we built this layout for the express purpose of not having to have the fluids get around very much. Hmm. Maybe I should run it at just 10 gigawatts for a while until the ice, uh, until the water fills out again. I also need construction bots in this block. Wait, we do have construction bots. Uh, do we not have any storage chests? Is that the issue? Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's not going to cause that much of a problem if we've got a handful of ice lying on the ground for now. Silent Storm. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so this one has water plus steam. This one only has steam at the moment. This one has water plus steam. And this one has water plus steam. That's weird. The one that I built last is a head in terms of fluid. The reason we have to wait like this is if we set the water level high enough that that's all going to saturate very quickly, like even after the initial burst of turning water into steam, um, then whatever we set this to... Oh, there's, oh, there's no requester chest here. That might help. Um, let's just copy this. And go. I'll have to pay another visit. One job, indeed. I mean, it, it's actually many jobs. If we're being honest. Oh. Oh, wait. They had... They had the requester chests lying around. That's handy. 
Well, that's that's a small mercy. All right, let's try. I'm sure we can bump up the power consumption at least a few times. Only one quarter of our reactor system isn't fully online yet. So let's turn this thing on. There's our three anchors. Wait, three anchors? I thought we only placed two. There's one at Calidus. Um, there's one at... Surely not Vazanus. Yes, Vazanus. Derp. And there's one at Electra, I think. No, we haven't... Yeah, there is. Oh, cool. I actually forgot... We have one more anchor than I thought. Uh, which means I built one more than we need. It's fine. It's only one of the most expensive items in the game. Who cares? Anyway. Uh, back to Foenestra. We can see we've got three anchors out of eight ready. Fantastic, indeed. Uh, power is looking just fine at 20 gigawatts. Let's power on the next one. Lock it in. Wait, what? Oh. I saw a little animation there that made me think this one wasn't working anymore. 30 gigawatts is looking fine. So it does that and then just slides back. Okay. 40 gigawatts looking good. Is it going to consume thermofluid? While we're doing this, or only when the whole thing is working? Fifty gigawatts? Uh, it should be just the last two that'll fall over if we're still waiting on water here. Uh, it looks like we're catching up to that pretty quickly, actually. But then it needs to be more than just a little bit full here in order to get somewhat saturated water into the middle. Mm. Uh, so we've activated that one. Seventy gigawatts. Tensions rising, indeed. Eighty gigawatts. And I'm scared to look at our consumption of antimatter canisters now. Uh, after some initial spike, it actually reduced. 19.2 per minute. That's 19.2 thousand antimatter stream. Uh, Nis O. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we may as well power this up and see how it looks. Um, I actually don't know if... If this is going to fall over if we don't give it more time first or not. Passion Sausage. Good to see you again. Oh, there it goes. It actually crashed pretty quickly. Um, I've got a circuit here that says if this accumulator charge drops 
below 100%. Uh, switch off the power connection to Foenestra. So that kicked in, what, 10 seconds ago? There goes the fuse, indeed. Yeah, so we'll give that some time for the fluids to saturate properly. And then we'll run another power test. A rather expensive power test. Yeah, it's just this second one doesn't have the water to chase the steam. Just yet. But we do have to... Uh, again, we do have to keep these tanks relatively empty uh, in order to, for the recycle flow to be fast. So I'm not filling them beyond 10k to begin with. All right, we have arrived. Let's go up here, I guess. Um, what's our power like? Well, first of all, let's remove these. And this and this. And this and this. And these, and that. Grab an anchor. Uh, there actually isn't anywhere I can put this where we can easily disconnect the power. So I guess I'll wait until... We should be able to do this in one trip. I'll just wait until we've got... Oh. 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 Three out of three meteors destroyed. Five shots. Okay. Um, let's send you back to orbit. I mean, not orbit. It's the same spot, basically, but... Right about here, thank you very much. Uh, what? Oh. Oh, they're auto-clamping. Okay. Alright. Let's see how it is. kind of have a bunch of bots queuing here, but I think with six regular robo-ports, I can kind of just ignore it. It'll take a minute, but not that long for this to sort itself out. Next time I'll use the auto clamp to have them land next to each other. And one more. actually got just enough range without even adding any radar construction pylons to finish this job here. Or to finish this half of it anyway. 
I could put the anchor over here. Put a regular pylon down. Wait, no, there it is. No, there's just barely not enough room. <laughs> Alright, secret scaffolding. How are you not... Alright, just pretend there's no scaffolding there. Shh. It's fine. Okay, that's kind of hard to ignore. Can't be stretched any longer. No. literally one off. Okay, no, we're fine. Alright, put this here. Why are my bots not picking this up? Here we go. Oh, so now we can just pick a dollies that to be connected whenever we're ready. And we do have some scaffolding here that we can lend to the cause. So let's bring our player ship down this way. And we're actually sort of almost finished with the scaffolding already. Yeah, that's actually going... Oh, yeah, there, there's our bot. Our, our disastrous recharge things. Um, maybe I could... Quickly throw down a supercharger here. I guess. Probably should have put this here as well. Grab our solar. Come to think of it, I should have just gone out and manually finished off the scaffolding. I'll probably have it by the time I get over there. Not quite. Hey, Maholic. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream today? Welcome, Raiders. Hey, look at this giant structure. That's how 
the beginning of human civilization's end started. I don't think we need a random giant structure. Ooh, teleportation, indeed. Struggling to connect to chat. Uh, like technical issues? It let me finally. Okay, cool. Let me just make sure we got the last of those here. Uh, all of these should be set to not clamp. Cool. I got banned from nuclear power and the gaming. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What do you mean banned from nuclear power? I finished my first ever 10 gigawatt nuclear setup after 1300 hours in Factorio. I've never built such a huge nuclear reactor setup. Understandable. I mean, the fluid mechanics makes it way harder than you'd think it would be, or arguably harder than it should be. How did you solve Arcosphere folding? I'm, uh, I am at it a few hours. It's pretty frustrating. Uh, well, at first, uh, I did it a bit differently to this, but this is actually Veldak's solution. Um, basically, we've got a big container. Maybe you have a robot network. We read everything from the Arcospheres. Uh, each times one output arcosphere divided by eight equals A for average. Um, so we get our total for each type of arcosphere and A for average uh, signal down here. Uh, don't worry about this for now. We're just offsetting. Oh, I even switched that off. Yeah, don't 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 even worry about that. Um, so we've got. The count of each minus a output each um, and you can see that's outputting basically all of our arcosphere counts but with zero uh, adjusted for the average as zero so one lambda down there means lambda is one above the average um, gamma for instance is three below the average or fall below the average now. So once we've got those numbers, um, we have this right here is what would happen if we did nothing. Uh, and all of these are different recipes. Uh, we're basically assigning kind of like a point system to figure out whether or not we want to run a recipe. Um, and the way we assign those points is um, each to the power of two. So if uh, theta is three, for instance, theta is at positive three compared to the average. We want everything as close to the average as possible. Uh, if something is minus from the average, it's bad if something's positive from the average it's bad uh, and the larger the number the worse it is um, doing to the power of two is great because it gives us an absolute value without adding another combinator we could turn the negatives into positives uh, for this purpose um, and also the further it is from the average the, the 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 more heavily weighted that is so that's a nice bonus um, so we add up each to the power of two, we add up the square of all of those separate arcosphere counts relative to the average, and the total is how many points away from the average we would be if we did this recipe. Uh, so for recipe zero, that's like 
what if we did nothing? Um, and all of these down here are just saying only output this if it is the, the smallest value. Um, so out of all of these, uh, right now it's this recipe here that's winning. That's the most desirable to do. Um, but yeah, um, so for, for all of the other recipes here, the only difference is we have a constant combinator that describes the inputs and outputs. So after we do this recipe, we're going to have one less uh, lambda, one less omega, one more xi, one more theta. And then we can do the math on, based on our point system, how desirable would that recipe be? Uh, and we can compare it to not doing anything at all. And we can compare it to all of these other recipes. And whichever recipe or recipes has the smallest point value, uh, the smallest deviation from everything being exactly equal, uh, that's the recipe that we want to run. Uh, it's pretty clever, honestly. The way I was doing things was... For each individual recipe, we say something like... Uh, if we've got more than... I don't know, five? If we've got more than five of this, and more than five of this, and if this is below average, and or if this is below average, then we run this recipe. Um... There's another trick that you might need sometimes, but if you set this up well enough, it doesn't appear to be necessary, which is uh, aggregate recipes. Um, if you take the two recipes that take lambda as an input and run both of those, one of these recipes will have uh, one of its outputs will be the other input for this one. And then one of these outputs will go to here. One of these outputs will go to here. Uh, one of these outputs will go to here. And one of these outputs will go to here. And basically these four recipes are effectively one recipe, which is two... Arcosphere lambdas plus one omega becomes two arcosphere phi plus one omega. Um, so you can swap lambda to phi and phi to lambda, xi to epsilon and epsilon to xi, zeta to omega, omega to zeta, theta to gamma and gamma to theta with these uh, aggregate recipes. That's clever, indeed. Similar to my solution. Looks like big brain. I mean, it kind of is. It's pretty tricky to figure out. Once you get your head around it, I mean, like a lot of things, once you get your head around it enough, your brain's sort of... Uh, how, how can I put this? It's got some functions written into it. It's kind of like muscle memory. Very accurately explained, the point system is called error. It's sum of squared distances from average. Circuits minimize that error. Yeah, I'm sure that's much better documented in computer science somewhere, right? We like Veldax machine? Yes, indeed. I'm rather pleased that this works without doing any of those aggregate recipes. Um, I thought for sure, I don't know. At some point I did think these would probably be needed, but it would be kind of, kind of really harsh if you absolutely had to be able to come up with those aggregate recipes. I didn't understand any of that, I'm sorry. Uh, basically,
basically it's magic. Aggregate recipes probably occur automatically via the error minimization scheme. Well, the error minimization scheme can't look ahead. It's kind of like playing chess without looking two turns ahead, and yet it works. Um, I have, while we were having issues and messing with it and stuff, I have seen it get to the state where we've got like a million lambdas, for example, and we're stuck. And then we had to put down some aggregate recipes to fix it. But when it's all working, it doesn't reach that state. And the blueprint for this can be found on the Discord. Is there a blueprint for that? Veldek Magic Cube? Yes, there is. Yeah, what were we doing before we looked at Arcospheres? This ship is still not built? What? Is this one stuck? I think it might be. That's probably why. High level view is that circuits simulate running all the recipes and checks which result... Uh, yeah, it, it checks which results are furthest from the average... Uh, from averaging everything. Really nice and succinct to use the square, uh, each to the power of two, in order to figure out... Uh, with just one combinator, we get a value for how... How far from the av how far from averaging everything running this recipe would be? Very cool. Of course, with the fact that we're constantly reading from this and triggering recipes, uh, and the recipes actually take a while, and also the inversion takes significantly longer than these other recipes. Um, that lag time is often going to cause... Like, basically, the brain is faster than the body here. Um, but not in a good way. Um, the orders from the brain get to the body, and then the body catches up, and the brain has moved on to give other orders based on the arcospheres that are now missing from here. You could put a timer on it, um, but then you'd have to decide, like, okay, do I want to base the pulses on how long it takes to do the shorter recipes or the long ones? If you make the buffers bigger, the lag matters less. This is true. The way to think about it is just like the recipe prioritization you do with CoverX, only with more than two options. Uh, recipe prioritization with CoverX. I mean, there's only one recipe. The long ones, you can always build an extra build. I suppose... Well, that just... That means you're going to have, like, more Arcospheres being used at once. You can't actually get the minimum time of one recipe down. Uh, Alright, we're done here for now. Let's move our ships back a bit. Rather that than the build failing. Indeed. Alright, you can all launch. And come to think of it, it would have been easier to do this part here. It's fine.
Oh no, 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 that's not easier actually. Oh no. Oh no, what have we done? Oh, the humanity. Oh no. So they, they seem to prefer to go to the right. I wonder if these... Hmm. I wonder if it's arbitrary or has anything to do with the signal order on the constant combinators. I don't think it's the latter. Alright, so we're going to measure out uh, this. You could have them all automatically land with your personal ship. I'd have to change the... Uh, the signal values for that. It would end up being more work. Doesn't have to be precise. And... Something like this. And then we get rid of all of this for the moment because there's no prioritization system. And then have one of these land about here. And the rest of them, we just have to do this. Oops. Wait, what? Okay. I, I think I'm trying to go a bit too fast for the way the surfaces update. And this should be our ship. Alright, cool. That actually worked out perfectly. Uh, do not forget to put down... The superchargers first. And once there's bots on the way to place those, we can go ham. Fantastic. And we should not see any bot halos this time. Let me just deliver some of this scaffolding as well. Okay, we, we, we do get this bot halo, but I don't care. That one still isn't powered? Um, okay. What about over here? Same thing. Just tuned in. Where are we tonight? We are spamming solar panels so that we can spam dimensional anchors so that we can make Fo and Estra go burr. Um, we've got probably all of our power in place, although we're still waiting on more water. For, oddly enough, this second one here. Um, there's quite a lot of water we need to add to this system before it will run properly. Unfortunately, we're burning a lot of fuel here without getting heat. Um, because we ran a test recently. Um, but I'm pretty sure we probably have enough power now. I, I certainly hope we don't have to add any more reactors to this. Um, theoretical maximum from all of these is 96... Uh, 96.6 gigawatts. In reality, it's going to be a little bit less than that, because fluid dynamics... Uh, fluid simulation in... Factorio 
hates you and everything you love. Um, even though we built this very specifically to recycle the water back in well, um, we still get the middle being a bit starved of water when everything's running at full speed. Um, but yeah, we're just waiting on lots and lots and lots of water. But it, it, that'll be done way before we've got our anchors ready. We've got three set up. We're, we're working on number four right now. We're going to need five by four of these giant squares of 255 solar panels um, to support each anchor. How many of the black solar panels would you need for the same power? Uh, infinity. Literally, it's the only place where you don't even get a token 1% of solar power. You, you literally get 0%. Uh, if we're talking about beaming energy... Um, well, the efficiency... No matter, I'm pretty sure it's the same no matter where we aim it, uh, no matter where we send it from. Uh, if we beam power to Foenestra, we're looking at 0.34% transmission efficiency. Uh, so, we need 294 point twelve times as much power pumped into it and it appears we need 90 gigawatts so if my math is not incorrect we would need 306,000 flat solar panels uh, wait no that's not 306 What is this? Uh, if that's 90 gigawatts... I'm getting confused with the scale of things. Wow, that's low, indeed. I think... Uh, yeah, I think we need about 25,500 uh, flat solar panel 2s if we were to beam the power there. So call it 26,000 just to be safe. Uh, and we need 20 times 255. Hmm. Times 8. We need... We actually need like 41,000 flat solar panels just to support all of the anchors. So putting it, putting it into perspective that way, it's actually not that extreme to beam power to support Foenestra. Yeah, and then you wouldn't have to worry about burning ludicrous amounts of antimatter. Oh, is this it? No, I keep looking at the wrong um, storage tanks to see how much water is here. Did I power this back on? I did. Oh, there's our display for... Wait, what? Wait, did I put an anchor down that's not fully powered? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's this one. As in... Because it's not plugged in at all. Okay, cool. We're halfway to powering it. 
in terms of power that we've actually put down. Does beaming matter how far away it is? Does a closer system have a better ratio? Uh, yes, but Foenestra is pretty much an equal distance to everything. Actually, it's e it's about equal delta V to everything, but I'm pretty sure you get the exact same 0.34%, uh, no matter where you beam it from. Beaming it to Foenestra. Alright, so we're going to need to not clamp to move these things. Are we out of scaffolding here? We are. So I can probably send the player ship back, but then there's no particular urgency for me to be anywhere else, and it might be a little bit easier if I'm here. Remove those. I guess I'll leave that there for the moment. We're done. Fantastic. Might be viable to power it with a huge accumulator grid. Uh, well, the accumulators that I've got here, which I forget why I put them there, uh, 42 accumulators, 2.5 megawatts, uh, 105 megawatt output, let's see, 90 gigawatts is, what, 90,000 megawatts? We would need 36,000 Naquim accumulators just to have enough... Oh wait, no, I'm looking at input, not output. So, take off one zero. Uh, we would need 3,600 Naquim accumulators just to be able to keep up with the, the output that we need to run the ring. Uh, and we would need more of them if we want to be able to run it longer than the shortest amount of time that it takes to empty an accumulator. It would be hilarious if placing anchors would bring wedding ring close to sun and could be powered with beams easily. Fly ships back and forth that have it that have been preheated. Yeah, I thought about, wouldn't it be cool if there were underground heat pipes when, uh, when I was using the, um, energy beam receivers all over the place. You've done it, Woot, grats, thank you, Finn Shady. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Right, so first we measure. Then we place some 4 by 4s so that we have a place for our 
superchargers. And then we get our construction ships. Anchor one of these at the leftmost spot. Switch on the clamp settings. Go to the other construction ships. Paste that here. Whoops, whoops, whoops. And... Go. I think it's, it seems to be quickest if I just wait for it to do that. And I can click on this. And... I don't know if I'll be needed. Oh, we've got a bit of 16 scaffolding. Probably not. Um, but let's hang around just in case. Alright, so then we have superchargers. Very important to put these down first. And then... Looks like we've already got the coverage. We don't need to add any more radar construction pylons. Best if they are behind the superchargers anyway. And I forgot the part where we add power for these two, uh, for this one again. It probably won't matter actually. Hey the West too. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. New cat video just dropped. Odd. Should copy this part so you can paste superchargers quickly. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I need to measure. I need to measure where I'm going to put the ships anyway. So what's this? One, two, three, four by five. This should be it. Um, 12.0 approximately. Wait, what's the plus 1402.77%? Um, 15.0277. 1200, wait, that doesn't sound right. Oh. Yeah, no, this is how much we get out of each solar panel. Okay. Times 255 times 20. Uh, we have a surplus of 131 megawatts, I think. Um, is that enough? How much do these use when they're fully... when they're charging? We're doing 1.9 megawatts here at the moment. We do have some accumulators as well. I think that'll probably be fine. Copy them and include the bottom row. Yeah, then I need another. I guess I could put the blueprint here. That is logged in. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, this is actually working perfectly this time. Much quicker. What? Really? Okay. So much for working perfectly. We're still getting some bot halos. Maybe I should add more superchargers? But I think it's probably a function of... They happen to run out of energy, like, closer to these two ports as opposed to 
Like, they, they'll always go for the, the shortest distance the moment they get down to, like, 20% charge or something. So... I don't think there's anything for it where I can make sure that all of them use the superchargers. Well, they're still going to do that relatively quickly. Uh, let's head back to Nalvis Orbit. Do I want to head back to Nalvis Orbit? I do want to rescue Nexus Prime, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. I need to give it heat, or I need to give it 5,000 degrees steam. I think I'd have to make, like, a... Either make, like, a specialized ship, or just... Ram in some storage for 5k steam here somehow. Don't know how I would do that. Um... No, that wouldn't work. We can't actually dock the ship next to it. We can't put 5k steam in a barrel. I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's methane gas. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think the way to go here would be to deliver a antimatter reactor, but then... Ugh, I guess we could remove the Nexus temporarily. Might have to. Yeah, that would probably be the way to go. Alright. I feel like I'm going to forget something. We do have our anchors. Why don't I just deliver the anchors while I'm out here? And we can put them in places where they won't be powered up until we're ready. And we can just pick a dollies the power pole. Alright. And there's the last of our scaffolding. Fantastic. Relatively easy jobs for the bots here. 16 times less stuff to deliver. How many anchors are missing after this one? Uh, I think I've got Phonestra powered up right now. Yep. Uh, after this one, four. Four. Four anchors. Ah, ah, ah. And we're getting much more smooth with our... with our process for getting this done. Uh, speaking of which... We still haven't got these antimatter engines, seriously. Okay, I should definitely go back to Nalvis Orbit. We'll fix that directly. Instead of mucking about with remote orders. Because I do not want those ships blocking the others from resupplying. missed the ending, it's right at the end of the last stream. Well, I mean, it's probably like the last hour of the last stream or something like that. 
uh, Big CX, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. I think you chose the wrong destination. Oh, true, thank you. Where even is Waxivis? It's down in exactly the wrong direction. At least it's not that far. Take care, West dude. Thanks for hanging out. I am the Sky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Midden. Welcome, welcome also. Alright. Uh, are we just about done here? We are. And boom. Boanestra reports that that anchor's working. Cool. How's our water in the second reactor? Uh, it looks like it's ready. Yeah. I think we can find out now. Look at how full that is, even though we're limiting the input from ice to 10k on one of the storage tanks. Yeah, uh, but we should be able to test now properly if we can run this 90 gigawatts consistently, or if we have to add even more power. It didn't take very long last time to crash, but that's because we didn't have enough water in yet. Uh, this, this reactor here should be the most suspect, but it looks like it's pretty much saturated, actually. So, if we're going to get a hint that it's going to fall over by looking at the fluids, um, we're probably going to have to look around a bit first. But considering, uh, considering it's like 6 gigawatts over, if this could work at max capacity without fluid problems, uh, and it's only the heat exchangers in the middle that had any issues at max speed. Uh, I don't... Th oh, no. And it's off. Yes, indeed. How long did it last? Uh, about 15 seconds. Lovely. I guess... Well, it didn't go above 90 gigawatts. Why did it shut off that quickly? There should have been... We've actually got 5k steam banked everywhere. Uh, it should be about the same up here. Yeah, even... Even this reactor has... 5k steam everywhere. It should have... It should have been able to run... For a significant amount of time. Off of that. What? Looked like the turbine has got filled on output steam. Uh, this is 5k steam that's being recycled. Uh, so basically that doesn't count. Yeah, I don't actually have any idea why it would have fallen over that quickly. Maybe it turns itself off if it can't activate all the anchors. Huh. Let's see. If I, if I power it up again... If that is not the case, we should see this power switch here flicker. 
if, if this accumulator charge drops at all, then... Then we know there's an issue there. Alright, we're at 90. It only lasted like 15 seconds last time, right? And if anything, it shouldn't last as long this time. Because the fluids haven't had as long to reset or saturate. I see the accumulator discharging. Yeah, it's not Foenestra, it's not Foenestra shutting itself off. If there's no logic, what stops the generators generating? Uh, if this drops below 100% accumulator charge, we turn off the power switch for Foenestra. Because it's not going to last. We could, we do have a significant number of accumulators here. Um, I don't know how long we would have to run this. Probably like 10 minutes or something, going by how the Nexus worked. Uh, if this is if this is a way to win the game, they probably want you to prove that you can do it for more than ten seconds. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just add yet another one of these reactors. That's totally overkill, but I don't care. Having a lot of reactors like this makes the fuel usage more efficient anyway, and that's kind of the thing I care about the most here. It's probably bottlenecking somewhere either on water or steam. Maybe split up the turbines in smaller segments. Uh, well, they're already built in such a way that they're in like the, the smallest section that they can, except that they're linked. So like, these two make more than enough steam for this. Uh, the steam turns into water and five, 500 degree steam, which turns back into water. The water goes straight back to here. It's like the smallest loop we can get, but they're all joined to each other so that it all balances. Um, we've got water connections... Uh, the, the water storage up here connects here, 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 and here. Um, but we do get a bit of a water shortage in the middle, oddly enough. But the steam is connected to all of... all via the underground connection. Yeah, no, it's not that. The 5k steam is always saturated. Um, or at least at first it is. But e th the thing is, um, we've got like 50k 5,000 degree steam uh, that is connected, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50,000 5k steam sitting right here, just waiting for this thing to take it. Um, that's on top of the 4,000 degree steam. Oh. No, this is because we're not using all of our power. This, this right here. That's going to go away if we use more. We've got 4k steam here and another 2k here. So there's like 6,000, 106,000, 5,000 degree steam waiting to be used by each high temp turbine generator, even if the heat disappeared. Um, so it really doesn't make sense to me that it only takes 15 seconds for this to not supply enough power. Really, really doesn't make sense. This should be able to run at full capacity for a significant amount of time, even if we cut off water or heat. 
15 seconds is probably how long the accumulator grid lasts. Uh, I don't think that's it. But we can check. No, it's like 15 seconds before the accumulator grid is used at all. Because as soon as this drops below 100%, um, like, you'll see this accumulator and these accumulators start discharging at the same time. Don't trust the fluid dynamics anymore? Yeah, the fluid dynamics are really just the worst, honestly. I mean, that's... That's why the, uh, that's why we've shaped that part of the, the reactor the way we have. Yeah, I see that. They all triggered at the same time. Gate tried to draw more power than available. I'd set the limit to less than 60% because the charge fluctuates a bit. Uh, not from what I've seen, but we can try it. Let's say greater than 50%. Alright, so here's our power. Can we just do this immediately? Oh. That's a no, then. Uh. Is it gonna reboot? Did I upset it? Have you tried turning it off and on? Lol, well, that actually worked. Let's, uh... What is it doing? Let's just give it a minute. And are we done here? Oh yeah, we basically are. So we're sending all of these back to Nervous Orbit. Uh, I should add you to the front of that. So there's no way to mess it up. Job well done. How much ammo do we have left? A little bit. Alright. Ready to... Power this up. We'll just see if there's some power fluctuations. I, I think it's going to be just a steady line, though. Seems like it tried to start and stopped. Yeah, it was weird. If you keep the power overview open, how much is the peak? We're about to find out. Uh, but I think the peak has only ever been 90 gigawatts. So after about 15 seconds game time, which is going to be about now, accumulators are outputting, and oh, oh look at that, production, yeah production capacity dropped like surprisingly quickly and smoothly. And I still have no idea why. Hello. There should probably not be 400... 500 degree steam... in this thing... if we just attempted to run it at 90 gigawatts.
Huh. Huh. That... That's a little bit frustrating. Considering that it only takes like 2.5 um, condenser turbines for each one of these. This ratio is really aggressive at trying to clear the 500 degree steam. And yet... It's accumulated here, and also it's inconsistent, um, like certain other th wait, what the, what, what, what? Okay, that's a problem. One of our high temp turbine generators randomly has water as an input. We're gonna have to inspect the entire thing. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I can at least... check them all just by mousing over like this. I think it's literally just the one of them that somehow has Remind water in the input. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. That shouldn't even be enough to make the difference, though. Okay, it's literally just this one. We're gonna mark that for deconstruction. Probably some underground pipe mismatching or something, yeah. And we're gonna put it back. And the other thing I want to try is running it at like 60 or 70 gigawatts. Wow, it does not take long to get that 4k steam. Because we're sucking it from here. Um, the other thing I want to try is running this at a relatively low power level. But also relatively high. And give the 500 degree steam time to drain out. Water is expensive in space. Yeah, it kind of is. I think it's already as empty as it's going to get. Hmm. If I'd known that this would happen, uh, and if someone had Someone pointed out yesterday um, that you can actually use chemical plants or biochemical facilities to just turn steam back into water. So instead of uh, using a condenser turbine to do that, we're just giving up. Instead of gaining power, we're paying a little bit of power to get rid of the 500 degree steam, but it would be a lot more reliable. Um, definitely what I would do on the next iteration of this reactor. Uh, but it looks like we are just about at the point... what? What? Now this one has full water? Oh no. What? What? How? Lowered mechanics? Maybe that would help a little bit. Yeah. 
you've got something attached wrong somewhere? I don't think I do. I think it's just how viscous fluids are in this game. Like, look at this. This is half empty. And this is totally full. Maybe the exact same design if it had pumps pushing the water to the middle. Well, that would just make it hard to output the water from here. So you'd need, like, you'd need a container just so you can read the water level, just so you can control the side pumps. Blech. This echoes what you went through with the victory ship? Yeah. Yeah. Reactors are a big pain just because of the fluid mechanics. If you accidentally connect two fluids, it's not a problem until one of them runs out. Yep, that's true. Then they mix. I think we're just going to have to make one more of these reactors, even though four should be more than enough. Ideally, you'd have separated heat exchanges so they don't all share the same water system. I don't know about that, because I've built this sort of thing without, for example, connecting the steam like this before. Uh, build it all perfectly symmetrical, and then you get very asymmetrical behavior with the fluids. Like, this one accumulates a bunch of steam, and this one doesn't. Alright, um, let's increase the power step by step and see exactly how much it can take. My guess uh, is 80 gigawatts, if not 70. Oh. Well, there it is. It's already dipping below 80. It's... it's getting worse. Oh, that is incredibly disappointing. Seriously, you're gonna get down to 60? We, bu we built this thing for 96, and it's gonna get down to 60. It seems to be stable at 60. Fluids do behave asymmetrically when you try to go beyond the pipe limits, as long as you don't go past 1200 a second. Uh, the pipes don't have an, a, a specific arbitrary limit. They... Wow. As much as it would discard all of the heat... Uh, Veldak, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Much appreciated. Passion Sausage, hope you like it. Uh, 38 subs. Veldak, very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's a hard limit, but they behave weird when you get close. Yeah, if you have, um... Few pipe sections followed by a pump followed by few pipe sections they go very fast um, I, I think I have to cut my losses here and delete what we've got yeah I, I think we got to start from scratch we should easily be able to power this thing with the number of reactors and turbine generators we've got here. Maybe I should jump into editor extensions to, to design it. I mean, I should definitely do that. But then time stops moving for our research and stuff. 
Um, our construction ships are all heading back. You could double it, then it won't run at full speed and will work better. Yeah. That's the lazier solution. Let's just throw more at it. Because if you are... If you're under capacity enough, a, a imperfect reactor will look like it works perfectly. Um, so we actually barely... We actually barely have 60. We need like 50% more reactor. So two more of these. If we're going to use the same design. I could... I could delete all of this stuff we've already got. That in itself would be a bunch of work. We'd lose all of this heat. We'd lose lose all of this steam. We'd lose all of this water. Um, and we'd have to and we'd have to design all this from scratch again. Uh, or I could just make two more trips to make two more of these reactors, and we're done. Uh, Elan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So yeah, I think we're going to go with option two this time. We can try and design a better one some other time. Uh, also, I need to get back here. We're still waiting. How are we still... Waiting on these antimatter engines. The train's not stuck per se. Do we have antimatter engines? We do. We've got 50. I just spent the last half of a day designing and testing a nuclear reactor. So it sounds like fun to me, yeah. I feel like I've done my time on reactors lately. You could make a prison sentence out of designing a big enough reactor. Alright, uh, how long till we get back to Nervous Orbit? 19 seconds? I think we can handle that. Also, I meant to check if we had antimatter reactors here. We do. Fantastic. So it won't be long um, to resupply. Let me put them here. It won't be long to resupply what we need to build out these reactors again. We've already got the ratios set up here. Um, but before I leave, I need to make sure I hand deliver even Roboports? Wow. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff arriving now. Quite a lot of different stuff, actually. I woke up last night and had a few thoughts about the giant wedding ring. I think there'll be surprise and there will be a puzzle ahead connected to star mapping. And another thought was a vague idea how to solve that puzzle. I know nothing yet about, but I have some suspicions. My reactor build went something like, this might work, let's tile it, let's tile it some more to be sure. Crap, I'm at 6 gigawatts. Yep, that's what happens. Something else I have to be cautious of in uh, the next playthrough is how these short train stations... Um, up to a point, it's just like 
move any number of different types of items easily. Uh, but then, once you hit that bottleneck, you absolutely slam into that bottleneck. What's this train doing? It's looking for scaffolding. Why is it not getting... scaffolding? Oh, I remember. Okay. We have arrived. We have our reactors. Let's not forget to manually grab those. Uh, it's literally just the two engines now. No, it's not. It's also Naquim accumulators. Do I have some? I do. I just realized it's been... Closer to three hours than anything else. Uh, we haven't had a break yet. So. Why don't we get ready to do some words on stream? And I'll fire that up as soon as I've got a destination for the player ship that we're waiting on. Antimatter engines. I don't think I'm going to just see them randomly. So let's do this. It was literally just two that we need, right? Oh, and this would probably help. Engines are on the way. some pipe, and we're good. Anchors are still here, right? Yes, fantastic. Get rid of this. how it goes when you use four-way intersections. Uh, it's not that so much as one stack filter inserter putting goodness knows how many things into a short train. Like, for example, 800 Naquim plate for some reason. Or all of this. Um, the bots will deliver it in a second. And you can see just how long it takes to load one of these. Alright, ship is not complete because it needs spaceship doors. We need exactly eight, and I can handcraft exactly eight. Let's do it. There it goes. Nuclear fuel is so slow to craft. Hey all, how goes the wedding ring? Da uh, Dardano, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the wedding ring is... Our power system sucks. 
Uh, so we need to build 50% more of it than we thought. Uh, but we're up to four of eight anchors that we've placed. Um, we've got some more construction ships so that we can put down the solar panels to support our builds much more quickly. Holy crap, indeed. Yeah, it needs... Uh, at least I hope it only needs 90 gigawatts of power. Um, so there's that. And crafting these uh, doors is taking longer than I thought it would. But we're almost there. This ship is... Of, of course the bots are building the doors in such an order that we can't get one of these ships started. Construction ship six. Wait, that's not right. Uh, seven. And eight. And, uh, where are we sending the next lot? We don't have an anchor at Hankerus yet, do we? We need exactly 20 more squares, but this is 6 by X. How awful. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, let's do Hankerus next, I suppose. Have we done Bazanus? Yeah, we've done Bazanus. Have we done Electra? It's closer. We've done Electra. We've done Calidus, Bazanus, Electra, Regulus. I guess Capellus is a bit closer. There's also some slightly unfinished business here. Let's do Capellus. And then we don't need to remember there's anything to the left or up. Launch disabled. I beg to differ. Away you go. And away you go. Actually, it goes left to right, up to down. Oh, build order? It's not random. It's arbitrary, though. Um, if you want to see the kind of patterns that emerge with bot orders, uh, jump into editor extensions or something, get a chest that is... how did I do it? I, I believe it was a infinity chest, and I somehow managed to make it spill all of its contents, which is a lot of stuff, uh, and we had like We had items on the ground taking up about this much space, um, just automatically marked for deconstruction for the bots to pick them up again. Uh, and you see certain patterns emerge in which, uh, which items the bots pick up first. It's not random, but it is very arbitrary. Simple way to create the carpet bombing pattern. <laughs> yes. Um, what else are we doing? I, I'm, I was about to send this to Foenestra, but now we're waiting on the scaffolding. I guess I could start the break right about now. Oh, let me check that. We've actually got that working, it looks like it. Just double check.
All right, so about 30 seconds, we're going to do some words on stream. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck and have fun.
Okay. Let's continue, shall we? With the space exploration. Fantastic. What's that ETA? Three minutes still. I wish, uh, I wish we didn't have so much trouble getting our scaffolding loaded earlier. Yay. Uh, I forget why I sent the spiders here. I think there were a couple of a couple of pipes or something missing from this antimatter. Did you beat SpaceX T hacks? Yes, indeed. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We beat it with this thing. Um, and it was looking. It was looking like it was getting very close to failing power wise um, at the end of 10 minutes of running the Nexus. Uh, basically, because we started this design with eight, uh, eight high temperature turbine generators, um, partly just because symmetry, um, what I ended up doing to trim down the hull stress to get it below 3,500 was I moved the Nexus from up here down to here. In theory, we only need 6.25 uh, high temp turbine generators to support the ship, um, plus a little bit more for uh, defenses. But the problem was, looking at the high temp turbine generators here and the heat exchangers here, you can see it is just a little bit lopsided. And given how... how can I put this? Viscous fluids are in this game? That became a problem. It was a problem that took a while to become obvious. Um, basically we ended up adding a pump to bring steam to the left. We ended up adding a pump to bring water to the right. And it was also running out of water over here. Uh, and to a lesser extent, I, don't, I forget if this thing was struggling a bit on steam as well. I guess it would. So as we neared the victory condition, uh, the power consumption on this, I guess it's... It's been deleted because this is now like, this has been spawned on a new surface. Uh, but basically we had a perfectly flat line of uh, 6.25 gigawatts of power consumption. And then you'd get the tiniest little dips in it. Uh, it turns out the Nexus can tolerate just a little bit of power droppage. And those tiny, tiny dips were getting, were gradually getting bigger and more frequent uh, until we finally pulled it off. I don't know how close we were to failing. I, I feel like we were very close. Did you solve the mystery around the space ring? That's what we're uh, working on now. Mazel Fazel, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we are pretty close to Foenestra. It's doing the random time thing. Um, we could massively redesign these... Uh... Why is it getting so cold? 5.82k. Oh yeah, this is based on steam for the input, isn't it? If, if this one drops below 20k, we put more steam in. Uh, we put more heat in, rather, so that we don't constantly burn fuel for no reason. Uh, theoretically, this should be 96 gigawatts of power, but in practice, once again, fluid mechanics uh, ruin everything. So we're going to add like 50% on this. It should 
based based on the fact that this was hanging at about 60 gigawatts, um, that should be enough. Should. It didn't lose heat earlier when you tested, did it? No, I don't believe it did. Uh, even if it did, we need the heat to make 5k steam. Uh, we've got 5k steam. We've got between the two tanks and the one high temp turbine generator, uh, we've got about 106,000, 5,000 degree steam sitting here, even if this shuts off. Uh, so that is about, about 106 seconds or so. So about, let, let's call it like almost two minutes that this would run on the steam alone. Um, but when we power this thing up at full power, it falls over in about 15 seconds. So that's definitely not the issue. Also, congrats. Thank you. So starting again with SE.6 now, not, not just now. Uh, I will take a little break from SE. Uh, I might do a short a different playthrough of some kind or two for Factorio, maybe not. Um, if I get straight back into SE, it'll be doing some design stuff before we even get started. But I'm going to do K2 plus SE with some other mods like big containers and stuff, uh, and loaders, things like that, to reduce the UPS usage. Uh, I'm also going to be playing Oxygen Not Included, uh, maybe some more Terraria, as in more than one day a week. And uh, SE, K2SE is going to be probably a couple of days a week. Do C block? I've never even tried C block. Only 170 hours in, so contemplating slash courage building the 0.6 upgrade. Ooh. Have you done Dyson Sphere program? I have. I haven't got that deep into it. Uh, I, I really want to get into Oni. I, I, I never got that deep into that either. I, I got to the... the, the mid-game hump that is notoriously difficult to get over. Are we there yet? It's impossible to say. Hope their enemies update is still on track for this year. Sounding pretty cool from the latest updates. Uh, is that for Oni or Dyson? Restarted my SE run at a similar point for the new one. Have yet to get back into space proper. I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff in the new update for SE. Really, really looking forward to uh, space elevators. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to just applying uh, some of the stuff we've learned this playthrough. Um, in particular, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be designing a system to have spaceships stop over at Foenestra so that we can take advantage of the shortened journey. Um, and to do that, I'm going to be designing a dispatching system. Space elevator changes things so much. Oh yeah, definitely. There's a bunch of uh, changes I've heard where they've made this or that stack size so much worse. But when you factor in the context that we have space elevators now, it's like, well, it's still a net positive. I think the different research progression is interesting, but much slower. They did do a few things to help you out, though. Like what? Can't wait for T-Hacks to apply his knowledge from 0.5 to 0.6. Lots of fun ahead. It's also going to be 0.6, but with... Um, but with... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, K2. So I don't know how much is going to be different as well. Okay. 
Um, let's get some scaffolding, first of all. Yoink. Don't put it all in my trash slots, please. Bot, stop chasing me. No. I may not have parked my ship far enough to the left here. There we go. Why are they bringing ice and... What? 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 Oh. Did I actually have a request for ice? No? They're just using me for a storage chest. That's kind of rude. Restarted my point five run and now doing... SC plus K2.6. How are you finding it? Know how hot you are? Rebuilding takes a while since they changed the science progression. Fun but annoying. Request to chests later so you have to work a while without them. Yeah, I heard that. this for now. Uh, I did bring enough scaffolding for one of these, right? We can move some scaffolding around if it's if it gets bad enough. Let's go... oh. That's actually... that's actually the limit right there. The annoying part is the extra fluids like oxygen, hydrogen, and chlorine. Uh, hmm. It doesn't sound like the kind of thing that would bother me. Alright, let's grab our suboptimal blueprint. And we actually need to go further to the left here. I also need to remember to put down a storage chest or two. Did I just leave barely enough room here? into the core miner holes. What do you mean by that? Great parking, indeed. So I just restarted since I couldn't be below to spend a few hours. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of thing. Uh, like, that stuff's going to really add up. Is this robo network connected? It is not. This will do, I suppose. And we need some storage chests. Why don't we just put them here?
Wait, what? Alright, let's grab the actual reactors and some of these, some of those. enough storage tanks. No, I remember packing the extra stack of storage tanks. There it is. In fact, I can just fit everything now. getting ready to start T2. That'd be like the hardest, That that's almost like the hardest point to decide whether to restart, right? You just invested enough that it's a lot to redo, but also... It wouldn't be that... Like, w would it be less work to update everything or to restart? So my clack or my holic playing K2s, I wanted to give it a shot. Update is less work 100%. Hmm. Alright, are we out of short pipe? That's weird. Um... How many are we missing here? 221. I thought I checked all the requirements for this blueprint. Oh, did I just forget to... Hmm, that's weird. Means I can't finish it on this trip. I can make another hundred. Wait, no, it was 221 that we're missing. So many. And what? 324 for the whole blueprint? Yeah, I can't believe I actually missed the space pipe requests here. Well, this thing actually can't output right now. Both of them missed out on the space pipe that would make it work. Let's at least give them that. Turn off my RoboPort. We can at least make a start on filling these out. Two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two. One and a two. I guess I could have just moved some of the existing pipes here. Uh, I, I was thinking of just handcrafting 
what I could here, but that's going to take 600 years. And... go. Oh, it makes two at a time. Wait, no it doesn't. What? Okay, so that is almost all of our water storage capacity, pretty much. That That's the longest part of getting this thing ready. Um, do I have more scaffolding? Yes. How many tiles is this? Nice. Wait, where are you taking that? Okay, never mind. Just let the bots fill out what they can there. Also, I should turn my robo pot back on. Let's head back to Foenestra. I mean, Navas Orbit. And we should be able to come back with everything we need to make the final power plant. Very much looking forward to trying the space elevator. Yeah, that is... That is the number one thing I'm looking forward to. Uh, for SE. Where were we going? Capellus? I think only two of them were headed for... a destination right now. Yeah, Capellus Orbit. They're actually there right now? Wait, what? Uh-oh. 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 Uh... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I forgot to put the fuel in. For both of them. And now the... Everything is deprioritized except for, like, defenses. So we can't get the inserters to input. Oh no. Once again, I regret my decision not to use burner inserters for those ones. Um, well, they're only in the Calidus asteroid belt, I believe. Wait. Yeah, there they are. We can, we can hit those up on the way back. Construction ship 7. Ship 7. Aim this one at the player ship. And which was the other one? Number 8. And we'll have to aim that one after. Not looked into the new smelting yet, currently only in the process of starting. Probably upgrade Nalvis once I have basic outpost set up. I love how, um, well, I, I don't know, I was going to say sp thanks to the space elevator. Um, the idea of getting off Nalvis and using a lower gravity planet 
as a base of operations is nowhere near as important. But depending on how long it takes to get the space elevator, uh, it could still be worth the effort. Especially going to a oil-rich planet, since we're going to be dependent on liquid rocket fuel for the longest time. Space elevator is T2 material, yeah. I think, I think it would still be good, for example, to go to Mars, or maybe a bit of a bigger one like Soma, radius 2.3k. I think that's a, probably a pretty good sweet spot, 2 or 3k, if it's an oil, if it's a crude oil planet. So the spaceships, or cargo rockets for that matter, can get off it relatively easily combined with an abundance of crude oil. If I were to restart again, I'm moving my operations to an oil planet. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's worth it. And it's not bad to have it... to have your main planet as a small oil planet um, or moon even when you do have the space elevator. Also, you could consider having a base of operations that's more central to the solar system and less far away from the exit to the interstellar map. I don't know if you'd find like an oil planet out here, or in the center or something, but you could definitely look for that. 53 seconds till we're at construction ship 7. Saw that mod change? Mod change. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you play K2, it changes oil mechanics a lot. Works more like normal resources and isn't infinite. The core fragments will be infinite though, right? Uh, not to mention, you'll still be better off getting the oil from a more oil-plentiful planet, surely. Or stay closer to the sun, but avoid waterless. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to mess with waterless relatively early on. Much faster production than normal SE. K2 changes oil fields to be a finite resource. Yep, I've heard that. So I guess close to the sun, small oil planet. would probably be the way to go, um, since you have to, I mean, your base of operations has to be something you can access early, obviously. Supplemented my ores with core fragments. If you go cryo first, waterless planets are a breeze. The amount per field is pretty large, so you won't run out on Nalvis anytime soon. Still something to be aware of and plan for. All right, are we there yet? Nine seconds. Okay, so it's not busted. Nothing's not working here. And go. And one for you, one for you, and that's it. And number eight. Uh, where were these guys going? Calamity. Wait, is it called Calamity? I 
palace. I was thinking of the mod from Terraria. The palace. Hobbit. Goat. It'll still have to wait till it warms up to 500 degrees, but that won't take long. And go. One for you, one for you. And I guess I can remove this actually. Uh, board bullet. In we go. Elvis Orbit. And construction ship 8 is going to Capellus. Orbit. And so are the rest of our construction ships. They're actually still being resupplied. Looks like we just got a train delivery of uh, ammo. They're pretty much ready to go, these two are. to recalculate. I'm pretty sure four ships can do the uh, 20 blocks of this. 4096 times 20 is uh, 882k. We've got five chests times two. Uh, yep. Yeah, two ships can get the job done at one star. So the... Or was it four? I, I've confused myself. Or was it the number of solar panels that was the bottleneck? Uh, let's see. 2 by 5 times 20... 5,100, we've got like 2,000 plus 300. Okay, yeah, we should definitely send like four ships, I think. Tricky part about the elevator seems to be the fact that it requires a substantial amount of materials to keep active. How substantial are we talking? Four cables per second. That doesn't sound too bad. Well, it depends what is meant by cable. Yeah. Alright, so we've done this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, we're, we've already got ships on the way to Capellas. I guess we'll do Hankress next. Um, or Penthus is closer. Let's send these two to Penthus when they're ready. You've got heat. Fantastic. I know they all do now, but I feel compelled to double check. Looks like your... I was going to say it looks like your resupply is done, but actually we're short a little bit of scaffolding. Point two five crafting time per... 
cable. Alright, scaffolding incoming. Uh, personal ship is only 15 seconds out from now this orbit. We're going to have to wait for scaffolding and stuff to be delivered here as well. Demonic Laxatives. Nice name. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I forgot we can totally take this for granted. This ship is very reliable. I just got in the habit of checking on power systems, I guess. Putrid one, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, I might go back to the mall real quick. Um, and that'll get my personal resupply done without bothering this bot system. Oops. Missing some lung pipe and stuff. It's actually quite a lot. This one seems to be good to go. And same with you. You will also be going to this orbit. Once you've been resupplied, that is. And it looks like... I was going to say it looks like I've been resupplied, but weirdly enough, we're still waiting on a couple of things. Teleportation hasn't moved that much. We're short. Thermofluid? What? Oh, that's actually really scary. What's going on with thermofluid? Uh... Okay, there's no shortage of 25 degree. It must be cryonite. Cryonite slush is empty. I thought we oversupplied this. I did take a big load of it to... No? That's 25 degree thermofluid. That's not even going to matter. Hmm. I think I'm regretting my decision to use cryonite slush. Even the argument that it's more UPS friendly doesn't really hold because you have to have more infrastructure to support the Crynite slush anyway. So why not just have more hypercoolers? Alright, let's check what's wrong with Crynite slush. Um, here we go. There's not enough Crynite. I thought we fixed that as well. There's only one place I think we're getting Krino from. Uh, we're missing delivery cannon capsules. Oh. Oh. Well, there's your problem. Um. I'm gonna have to go there. I think. Rip delivery, yeah. So we finally broke this constant combinator, which stopped deliveries from happening. 
It's probably that we were sending too many explosives at once without a sophisticated system. Um, so I can either stop having, what, four? This is Hagen, and this is also Hagen. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, cannons delivering explosives. That's probably all it takes. I need to go over there and fix it. But we probably do need more exp uh, explosive throughput to support the delivery cannons. Alright, um, why don't I... Where's my remote? Head over there now. Are we resupplied here? We're missing a little bit of scaffolding. We don't have our... We're one short on our antimatter reactors. There's also a bunch of pipes missing. Oh, and crucially, my temp... Yeah, it's going to be a while before that's ready. Wait, I should have checked if that had enough scaffold. It does not. And you as well. Alright. Let's go to Hagen. ETA should be very, very short. Uh, maybe I should just go to the trouble of... Implementing one of these uh, complicated systems. Uh, timed pulses. So that we deliver lots but a precise amount of explosives, for example. Basically just making sure that every time we request uh, one stack of explosives per cannon that's aimed at this, we only get one stack of explosives per cannon. Instead of the inserter putting in extra delivery cannon capsules. 90 seconds... Uh, how close are our construction ships here? They are not. Where are they right now? I see them. Construction ship, ETA, 11 minutes. Okay. What else can we be doing right now? We've got all of our construction ships that we just doubled. Uh, already in motion to build the solar panels to support more uh, anchors. Uh, once they're done, we'll be up to six. So one more trip like that, and it'll all be finished. Uh, we're basically finished with this. We need wait, There's some pipes missing, but that'll get done when we get back there. Um, I could implement the pulse system for Hagen. So on this end, it's exactly the same still. We just connect the Pentium, for example. Uh, we, we can 
connect, to connect the signal receiver to these inserters that put in the delivery cam capsules. The only difference is on this end, uh, we have a circuit that's like a timer for each that reads from whenever we're requesting that a certain resource gets sent. Um, and then we need a little bit of complicated stuff to say, instead of like pulse it when the timer stops on a certain tick, which has a very small chance of just constantly sending a signal um, when we're no longer asking for it. Uh, we basically have a pulse generator, a plus one here, and then this has to equal two, which means the timer has to be running Uh, how does this work again? So we got timer that resets at 700 ticks. Pulse generator. So this will output one whenever the timer is running. And then plus one for whatever the input is. from the timer. No, it's not just from the timer, it's... Oh. Oh, I used the double wire here to save a combinator. But that's... Wait, what? That red wire doesn't do anything. That's an input, and that's an input. What? What? Who did this? Okay, so when this thing's outputting one explosive, this thing this thing is outputting whatever this is plus one. One tick later. And this thing outputs one, one tick later. Yeah, so this when this is equal to two then we know the timer is running. Huh? That feels like the opposite of what I want. So this outputs one and... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This outputs one and this outputs something very similar to what's on the timer. Uh, so when the timer resets, this will output one for one tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's basically just magic and we're going to copy-paste it. That's how that works. Glad we cleared that up. Alright, so instead of linking that straight to there, we're going to link it to this, and that's it. Does the negative... Yeah, no, that's fine. So, so far we've been looking for... Sulfuric acid barrels for 380 ticks. Copper plate for 354 ticks and so on. Um, and we only send out a pulse. Once that hits, it's going to be 700 ticks, which will be a bit long for Hagen. Um... Or a bit short, actually. But yeah, that'll that'll output sulfuric acid barrel for one tick when we need it sent. So because the timer was too short, because it takes longer there it is. I might be thinking of that backwards. 
takes longer for the delivery cannons to charge, therefore this should probably be longer. I timed it exactly over at Via Terra. Hmm. How do I get the right time for this? I think I just need to look at what tick the explosives arrive on. Probably wherever the explosive count stops. It's still going. Uh, maybe because after the change I made we don't actually have enough um, explosive delivery cannons. So this will pulse when the time comes. Post victory lap woo, indeed. You can now explore to find all these lost frames. How dare you. Tumbling satellite, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So have the Ori invaded the galaxy yet? Not to my knowledge. I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy and like assume... actually no. Why don't we look at the timer on Pentium? It should be about the same. Oh, because we got rid of it, that's why. Mm, okay. Let's just say it probably takes about a thousand ticks after we pulse for our stuff to get here. Lazy is good, lazy is fun. Indeed. Alright, so there's our cryonite again, which we foolishly relied on for thermofluid. And we've got safety... Safe, safety implements in place to make sure we don't overfill this chest, even though we've got, I think, five explosive delivery cannon. Yeah, five. Five explosive delivery cannon uh, aimed at it. Why? Oh. Did I stop sending heat shield here? Nope, there it is. Alright. Well, that should probably mean that we get enough uh, cryonite again. And away we go. Fantastic. Not so fantastic is that in the meantime, uh, we're kind of stuck. Well, not we're not kind of stuck. We are stuck. Um, for thermofluid. Do we have some partially filled? Oh yeah, let's send this thing. Mostly filled cryonite slush. That will help. Quite a lot. ETA again is about 90 seconds. Um, how many condenser turbines and stuff do we have here? 60, well, that includes what's in the ship, doesn't it? Okay, are these two ready to go? I think so. 
And they were going to Capellus? Capellus. Yes. Deep Space 2 science is a huge jump in complexity. Uh, for this version? Let's see. Deep Space Science 2, or Catalog 2. Annihilation, Hyperladder, Singularity, Time Space. Uh, Annihilation, Hyperladders. Yeah, it's these four. So we've got blank and two fluids in and one out. That one's pretty straightforward at least. What about the prerequisites? Particle stream, antimatter stream. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, then we've got three in, one out. So far, so good. Naquium cubes. 50% uh, recycle. Not too bad compared to things we've done already. This was the fun one. Um, we've got one, two, three, four data cards in plus Naquim cube. All four of those data cards get recycled at 60%. We also get blank data cards, junk data cards, broken data cards. There is, of course, thermo fluid going in and out. And sometimes we even get time space anomaly data. Ten out of ten wood sushi again. Oh, Deep Space Three. Oh, my bad. Still, the sushi was fun. Uh, Deep Space Three is space X Y Z data. Um. Oh, those were, oh, yeah, 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 those are the Arcospheres. Absolutely. Good times. Alright, what's our ETA right now? 14 seconds, fantastic. What about our construction ships? They're not in the system yet, are they? Nope. It's five minutes. Hmm. Okay, what about the ones I sent to Penthus, I think it was? I think that's them there. Also about five minutes. So then we're going to have to, like, try and be really quick to not lose time. Uh, I guess I can start setting this up ahead of time as well. Also take advantage of the construction ship we've already got here. Um, does this reach? I think it does. Let's do number five over here. I think the bots are gonna... They're probably gonna halo around this though. Maybe not. And we'll need another row. Some room. Or superchargers. And we'll land our construction ships below that. Yeah, they are haloing around this. Why don't we just 
put a supercharger here. And remove this for a s wait, what? Remove that for a second. There should now be a bot on the way with the supercharger. I hope. There it is. Don't worry if the Ori go to Australia. They'll get overrun by wildlife in no time. Maybe almighty, but no way they can deal with this madness down under. But we have lovely kangaroos. They're mostly very friendly. Mostly. How's our thermofluid looking now? Uh, this part's still empty. This one, not so much. Okay. Uh, in fact, how much cryonite do we have down here already? I think I super prioritized this because... Yes, good. Because if thermofluid stops, everything stops. Where are we making cryonite? Was that in the... Omni smelters? It is. So it might take a minute. I hear emus are the real danger for armies. Yes. Do not mess with emus. Um, what else was I about to do with player character? Probably come and pick up, uh... turbines and stuff like that. And... Condenser turbines? Oop. Wait, let's see if we have the condenser turbines here already. Oh, I think we already do. We could bring the heat exchangers over at least. But we only needed a few more of those as well. Whoops. And it's mainly the long pipe, which I'm going to be carrying as soon as I get here. So yeah, that was actually unnecessary. Um, still, carrying a stack of these is not a bad thing. I guess no notes. Do we not have any more? I guess they all got taken by a train. We're trying to make some right now. There's no lattice, lattice pressure data. I don't think we made a block for that. I think we just make it here. And apparently we don't have room in our requests for that right now. Hmm. I could just, you know, do this. Wait, what was it called? Lattice? Oh, it changed recipe. Lattice pressure vessel. A Salford cell. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I don't think I can make it in that machine. How's your stream today? Welcome, Raiders. Hey, hey, hey. 
clan folk. Oh, was that that uh, chill looking hex game thing? I had a lovely stream, thank you. Nice, nice. Uh, what, were, what were we doing? Vessels. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Request a chest. And go. Do we not have cryonite? We have cryonite. Twee tea? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Holy logistic bots, Batman. Yes, indeed. Maz, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. And Death138. Clan Folk is a colony manager where the focus is on getting your clan to have babies. Oh, so not the... What was the name of that hex game? Uh, Maz, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Mixing Cryonite and Vulcanite seems a bit weird. Uh, should have just swapped to stone bricks. I guess. Tweety, thank you for the follow. Hex game was... Dorf Romantic. Yes, 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 yes. Alright, are we getting high temps? We are. Fantastic. I think we've got enough now. But I don't want to waste a trip. Oh, we've even got the long pipe here now. Okay, cool. We're definitely, definitely going to have enough. Let's head over to Foenestra, and for the last time, definitely, definitely the last time, we're going to say that we're going to finish our power plant. There's, there's no way this could possibly, possibly not be the last trip. It's, nope, not even worth considering. What about our construction ships? Are they at Penthus yet? Almost. Um, what's your ETA? One minute. Fantastic. Let's grab our spider. Back to Foenestra once again. Bring the victory ship in case you need spare parts. Uh, no, I think we'll be fine. Thank you. But we can, we can admire it. It does belong in a museum. I'm, I'm still pleasantly surprised we got it down to thirty five hundred. Uh, hull stress that is. So we didn't didn't need to do one more research to unlock the. Uh, to actually achieve the spaceship victory. Alright, I see motion everywhere. Super cool thermo fluid is coming in again. That's good. Meanwhile, at Panthers, hurry up, will you? This ship's taking its sweet time, but that's totally fine. What about Capellas? Probably about the same. Yep. In fact, I think we'll get all four of these here before we get the other ships at Penthus. Which is... Where where are the other two? That were headed to Panthus. Four... Uh, sorry, six... 
seven, uh, three rather. Derp. Six, three. Oh no, I think I sent six of them to Capella's orbit. Uh, whoops. Oh well, I guess they'll get this one done that much faster. Actually, no. Is this number six? Where's the other one? It's not too late to turn this around. But I don't see where the other one is. Don't tell me it's still in Calidus. No. Maybe they're both like on top of each other. Yeah, I think I see them. Alright, you are going to Penthus. Actually. And... So are you. More faster? Yes, indeed. Hook it up to the power ring. Bring the victory ship. You could hook it up to the power ring. Yeah, yeah, I could do that, but it wouldn't be as efficient. Are we there yet? Uh, about three minutes, which means in about 30 seconds or a minute, the ETA is going to go all over the place. Uh, we'll be there soon. Alright, can we get started here? Fantastic. Um, hmm, I've made this a little bit awkward for myself previously. I think I'll put this ship up here. And this one and clamp to that. Oh, it's already set to two that. Wait, what? ID 99. 99 to 99. Huh. I don't know why this didn't automatically connect. Uh, did I actually leave enough room? Yeah, just barely. There's some superchargers here. Speaking of which... Uh, don't go down there yet, actually. How many anchors left to place? Uh, four. And we're working on... Uh, what we need to place two of them right now. Chucky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Actually, we need to remove those tiles right now. Otherwise, we're going to get bots recharging up here. Also, I forgot to... Oh, no. I forgot to power the... Uh, Superchargers. And bot haloing intensifies. That's unfortunate. Wait, so we brought three ships here? Where's the fourth? There it is. Will you power the giant wedding ring reliably today? Uh, I think so, but I don't think we're going to get the anchors done. We're one minute... Oh, we're, we're less than three minutes out from Foenestra, and I'm pretty sure we're on... I'm like 90, 80% sure we're on the final trip to Foenestra to power it.
the nice thing about the energy beaming, and after doing the math, after comparing it to how many solar panels we need to support all of these anchors, uh, I think it would have been just as good to just beam power to Foenestra, despite the 0.34% uh, efficiency. The nice thing about the, uh, the beam power is these things are too small to, to have fluid throughput issues. This just works very, very, very reliably. I mean, you could, you could build bigger from one beam receiver, but why? There's, there's no need. You don't, it's not like uh, reactors where we gain fuel efficiency by having them next to each other and one big central heat source. Better to just spread it out like this. All right, are we good here? I think, yeah, these bots that are recharging over here have been assigned to this. That's why that's not done yet. We could also stand to put this over here. Burgers and fries, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And go. Uh, and don't forget to give it some power. So we got one, two, three, four, let's make it five. And then at Penthus. Um I already measured this, didn't I? Yep. Let's go back here. that have range? Yeah, it does. And then power pools. I'm just using pylons right next to the superchargers so that it's very clear that they're just there for the superchargers, and we're not going to stuff up uh, thinking that the superchargers are powered when they're not. What about our other ship here? Once again, I see the uh, roboport is in the way. That's why it's not auto. It thinks there's a roboport in the way to clamp here. I don't see why. Powick Meister, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, tired, but that's because I can't get good sleep with a hundred pounds of extra dog in bed okay just sat here for 10 minutes cleaning out my list of mods in factorio the ones i don't use at all or that often only 10 minutes are the robo networks not allowed to merge they are allowed to merge um we've had ships like as soon as one of them clamp uh one of them anchors 
a bunch of them auto anchor to the right, to the right, to the right. We've done that before. I, I don't know why it's not happening now. It's not that big of a deal though. Alright, let's park here and get to it. Oh wait, not the anchors. Don't need the anchors right now. Uh, what I do need that I should have picked up is scaffolding. in here for now. And before the bots capture them, grab the scaffolding. to recharge. Scaffolding go burr. we can let the bots catch up. So slow. Uh, how about some more robo ports so they can charge faster? Even the eight fusion plants aren't keeping up. Well, they kind of are, actually. Alright, more scaffolding. Almost there. Should have quite a bit of range many robo ports. Of course, the further the bots go, the less efficient it gets. How do you find those ruins for Arcospheres? Do you just check planets at random? Uh, yeah, basically just a lot of zone discovery. That's how we found them. What was that called? Alki. Uh, Fabio Kevin, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This moon is not very interesting. It's very small, far away. I guess distance, uh, next playthrough distance is really not going to matter very much. Although, I wonder... I wonder just how quickly we can find Foenestra. We can ignore it while we're still using cargo rockets at least. We just pay more fuel. Um, I, I, I wouldn't even want to try to save fuel from cargo rockets. By using Foenestra. 
having more trips and have it drop off, like lose cargo rocket sections and lose cargo twice per trip. Uh, what was next? Annex. Waterless, 40k distance. Uh, copper, kind of small. Windstone. Uh, another small moon. Not very interesting. It's nothing but moons now, apparently. Mixin. Rocket fuel is not that big of a cost since there's so few steps in making it. Yeah. But as soon as we get spaceships, I want to use Foenestra to decrease the distance. Uh, Crixalis. Really small moon. Pretty far away. Achilles and Avacus. Yeah, nothing too exciting there. Alright, let's go finish dropping off this scaffolding. And we should have room for another one of these power plants. Almost. Oh, I didn't get all the scaffolding yet. That's why they haven't filled this out. I think we're ready to start this reactor though. Let's synchronize the inputs. Very cool. And they're going to burn through at least one of these each before they even get to 5,000 degrees. Which is our threshold for getting some steam out of them. Robo network yet. That's why there are no deliveries. Actually, why don't I put this over here? It's already powered. Let me in. Scaffolding. I was going to fly, but now the bots are going to reset if I do that. Okay. Back we go over here. That's fine, actually. Thought this was not supposed to be here for a second there. Why are we missing a single antimatter reactor? Oh no. I could have sworn I counted them. Did I, did I misread a 15 as a 16? Oh no. Well, it's going to take some time to fill out the water here anyway. But still, to make a whole other trip for one item, grab one from the ship? Uh, what do you mean? 
We've got nuclear reactors in the ship. Yeah, I had it set to bring 16, but they never got... The last one never got delivered. Nuclear reactor will transfer heat. <laughs> yeah, it's an over... It's a glorified heat pipe at that point. Literally one item short. Tragic. Alright, let's go get it, I guess. Call over the victory ship. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. This one is also quite fast. Uh... Top speed, I think, is like 240. <laughs> 232. It's not much slower than a victory ship. Alright, how are we going here? We need some more... Uh... Why don't we just put a temporary supercharger over here? And I think we can get away with just one of these here. Actually, yeah, no, that'll be fine. Fantastic. Alright, back to our opposite number, Capellus. One, two, three, four, five. And as soon as that's done, mark all of these for deconstruction, and then grab the scaffolding. Taking an oddly long time to do. Alright. Launch. Launch. You're not using... I was going to say you're... Oh, now it's working. Okay, I see how it is. Oh, okay. Alright, switch these combinators off. Launch. Anchor. Make sure there's room for superchargers. Hi, Hex, Sapolsnia. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why not just blueprint all the superchargers and network extender thingies you need first and then put down the entire thing, because um, we kind of have to trim them bit by bit as well. Launch, 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 but yeah, I could probably make something a bit more consistent down here. Let's add pylon substations like so. And actually, I'll just be a little bit lazy and make those radar construction pylons. 
Snap to grid relative. And shorten that a bit. Uh, is it 25? Don't forget the tiles. And I'll just put that under here. So then we just go like that. Fantastic. Having a two-step blueprint for this would make it a lot faster. Not that much faster. Alright, so now that that is all queued, uh, we should be able to go ham with the scaffolding. Require less attention, yeah. This is a bit excessive with the um, superchargers, and I do not care. What's the shortcut for the blueprint to snap to the right spot? When you make a blueprint, uh, there's a checkbox here that says snap to grid. Uh, by default, it goes to absolute, which I I don't think I've ever used. It I, I would certainly argue it's you're less likely you're, you're going to use that less often. Uh, but you can change that to relative, which is the way you see me using it. Absolute means it's just locked to an arbitrary grid position, like um. Like where the chunks uh, on the map are, for example. Uh, if you change it to relative, that's that gives you what you see me doing. And also, I learned recently, uh, hold shift, click and drag this around. You can change the XY offset um, for the snap to grid very, very easily. I don't know if there's like a... I don't suppose there's a keyboard shortcut to like drag this box a bit smaller, but that's easily done anyway. Absolute is useful if you want to start building your grid for multiple places. Yeah, yeah, things like rail grids, a lot of people like to use absolute, but uh, most blueprints, like especially if you're about to um, make a long row of uh, assemblers or something, um, you're going to want relative. Today I learned, yes indeed, Factorio Trivia, there's, uh, there's no shortage of things you can know about it. Oh, we're still doing the flaws, whoops. Now we will still get some Haloing around roboports. There's just nothing we can do to completely prevent it. Oh. Oh, this is so much worse than I thought it would be. There's still lots of them haloing around the... the superchargers. Alright, why don't we just get rid of that? We'll put the uh, we'll put the radar construction pylons further back next time. All right. What about at uh, the other end of things? Looks like we're pretty much ready to go. Um, let's do this one first, and we can put this here. This can go here, and then it's just like one step 
well, pretty much one step to change that back. And then this goes here. Have you achieved spaceship victory already? Yes. Scale the summit. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Here is our victory ship. Uh, it's got seven high temp turbine generators to supply 6.25 and change times uh, gigawatts of power. Um, it had some problems with fluid throughput because of how the turbine generators are offset from the heat exchangers. And it looks like it was going to crash, uh, have a have a bit of a power crash, but it wasn't quite enough to stop it. I think if we had to run the Nexus for 11, 12, 15 minutes to win the game, uh, then this ship would have failed. It was getting close. Basically, we had low water input over here eventually, and low steam input over here eventually. That's why we added these pumps, uh, steam to the left, water to the right, but it wouldn't have been enough indefinitely uh, to keep the Nexus going, I think. Not the best looking victory ship I've seen. Uh, this is false. There could be no better ship than this. Objectively. It's not like I built a ship and then cut holes in it in order to cut it down to hull stress 3500. Or moved the Nexus back from the front in the middle and got rid of a high temp turbine generator which was nice and symmetrical and would have kept those fluid issues from happening. Uh, that's definitely not what happened. I'll have you know. So... This is the best ship, actually. And shame on you for saying otherwise. Now that that's settled, uh, we are... F I was going to say 15 seconds? It jumped back up. Does the Foenestra ETA fluctuate, but only within a certain percentage? Oh no, we're going to Nervous Orbit. Did I just misread something? It's fine. It's fine. Alright. Almost done with this row. Let's get rid of you. And... That's pretty much it. Is that going to reach? Yeah, it is. Cool. There should also be construction ships coming in. There they are. Alright, almost done on this row as well, at last. We are back at Nalvis Orbit and looking for our one uh, antimatter reactor. I'm just going to go pick it up myself. I'll wait till the bots take this stuff, I guess. Actually, no, they're resupplying me. Let's get out of here. Anti-matter reactor. Literally just one. It's not like we don't have to wait for... Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. The water's actually... filled up already. I, I say filled up. The moment we turn this on, 
it's going to get all flashed to steam and then we have to put more water in. But setting the limit higher is a problem once the fluid cycles. Are we there yet? Uh, what do you mean there are no antimatter reactors in storage? I thought we had, like, many. Did they all come over here? No. This is kind of concerning. Did I stop the request to build them? No, definitely not. There's no Naquim cubes, perhaps? There's no Naquim cubes. That is more than a little bit concerning. Um, where's our Naquim plate? It's looking pretty full. Let's send it up early. Have we still been making ingots? Oh, let me guess. The cryonite shortage. Oh, that's bad. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we're playing catch up again. After messing up. Once again, it's from messing up our thermo fluid. I have nothing but regrets from utilizing the uh, the thermo fluid recipes that use cryonite slush. It's like we're paying cryonite for a few more speed modules in each machine, effectively. I guess some speed and efficiency modules. It goes faster, is what I'm saying. Um, but when it comes to... Uh, let's see. Where can I demonstrate this? Uh, one of these. And let me get some speed in here as well. Uh, both of these recipes turn 20 cool thermofluid into... I guess turning it into 25 thermofluid means we lose a bit of thermofluid. Because there's no perfectly efficient recipe to, re to turn 25 degree thermofluid into a colder temperature. Uh, the negative 10. But it's so small. Um... We basically... No, both of these make five... Ten cool thermofluid makes five and five. Twenty makes fifteen. Five. Okay, yeah. We do save 25 degree thermofluid. From... We have less of it that gets turned back into negative ten and less of it get... that gets wasted. But I think it's still way, 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 way more resource efficient to not use the cryocooling thermofluid. And what you save on number of machines, UPS and so on, uh, it seems like you lose that by needing to supply the cryonite slush. So it really doesn't seem to be worth the effort. Although that said, it was working just fine for a while. But yeah, I could have like two to four times as many hypercoolers here instead of having this many chemical plants here. Oh, and also instead of having to crank up cryonite production pretty much for the first time ever, almost. We've only ever had Hagen for Cryonite, and it's been way more than enough without even trying. Uh, 
Uh, where is our cryonite coming in? Here it is. It all seems to be working just fine. Alright, what are we doing? I could go pick up some cubes manually if... Oh. Okay. How high priority is this? You know what? I think I should pick up some cubes anyway. We're only looking for... I think it's 50? We literally just need one antimatter reactor. What are the odds of, like, running out of this stuff with literally one reactor to go as well? Slim to none? Uh, stacks to eight, so... Eight stacks. No, seven stacks. Hellion, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, wait, we're not there yet. Yeah, everything's come to a screeching halt because we broke our thermo fluid. Why is this so lopsided? Wow, that is... Oh, I see. Wait, no I don't. Wait, yes I do, because this is pumping from here. No, that still doesn't make sense. If anything, that side should be more full of thermo fluid. Whatever, it's fine. Give to me... Uh... You know what? Yes, I'll just take those. And avoid walking through this robot network. Back to the mall. As soon as we get there, the bots are going to take the cubes. They're going to make... Uh, nuclear, uh, antimatter reactors. Why are two of these recipes not enough space in chest? It's trying to output. Yeah, it's trying to output a million superconductive cable as the recipe gets swapped. Maybe I should um, manually insert one of these. In which case. I don't have to avoid this robot network. Alright, let's continue over here. Are you sure we finished? Yep. Looking good. And then... Uh, whoops. How many anchors so far? Four. This will be number five, and the opposite one will be number six. Why don't we just use this to measure? And... What's the middle? There it is. That's actually a pretty good idea. Just put those down before we even move. I thought I removed the, uh... What? What? Sneaky. Look at that. Invisible... A uh, radar construction pylon. Uh, and we need 
need superchargers here. And then these can actually go significantly further back. Wait a sec, that's too far. In fact, no, this is fine, actually. I'll use this to make a blueprint. Alright, so they are powering each other. Select the content, snap to grid, relative. Uh, technically, it's fine if I leave the height where it is, but let's not do it that way. Oh. Now then. Did we not finish this? Yeah, we did. Whoops. Tell me the scaffolding got under this thing. Uh, I guess there's no reason not to leave it there, actually. Let's uh, grab our blueprint again. Constant combinators for the moment. Launch. And anchor. Let's start the one on the left because they seem to prefer going to the right. Liking the space rowboats. <laughs> Thank you. Flushy snow meow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, it's just a uh, kind of an emergent um, design from fitting uh, four antimatter engines on the back of a small-ish ship. And then uh, obeying the laws of streamlining up the front. Not to mention uh, shaping it to fit the shield projectors. The walls just behind them. Alright, that's looking pretty neat. Meanwhile, at Panthers... Launch and launch. And then anchor right about here. Is that not connected? Huh. 
That might be doing the same thing at Capellas. Yeah, it is. Okay. We should probably... Hmm, I don't know, actually. I was going to say we should put the blueprint down after the ship is there, but then we want to measure this anyway. It's easy enough to connect a wire when we've got nav set. Um, alright, so... Plant. Robo port is in the way. I don't understand why it keeps saying that on this end. It's the exact same ship design. And the robo port is clearly not in the way. We can just link them up manually. It's not that important anyway. Alright, that should get the job done. Uh, we're actually missing some superchargers here. This could be a disaster. Probably fine. I don't really need that one. Alright, where are we? Let's get our reactor. Fantastic. Bring it to me, please. And now we can finally go and finish that build. Does this reach? Yeah, it does. Even with the perfect setup, oh god, they're actually spending a lot of time at the uh, radar construction pylons. Well, can't win. Maybe if I surrounded the pylons with superchargers? How's our cryonite now? I see cannons firing. I see core fragments not reaching the end of the belt even though there's no power issues. That's good. Those pylon charging ports are a menace? Yeah. I can see why they are disabled by default. I've said it before, but if only you could have a limit to how many bots are queued for the pylon. Like, if it's only got one charging spot, only let maybe four bots queue for it at once. It sucks a bit that robots don't prioritize the uh, superchargers. Yeah, it really sucks. It kind of kills the point of the superchargers very often. But I understand that there just isn't a way around that with modding. I mean, that that is my guess. Since the vanilla game didn't anticipate more than one kind of RoboPort. Alright. 
Alright, so our ETA is probably about three minutes and a half. And it's actually about time to finish the stream, unfortunately. Um, we will be continuing this solar spam until we have our anchors. I guess we can hang out until we confirm uh, that the power plant is going to be enough. It should be more than enough, but then the four blocks of this were supposed to be more than enough. So we've added 50% to that. I can get this one warmed up. Oh, it is warmed up already. There. So it's already full of steam. And it's recovered with the water. Alright, cool. Just the one reactor to go. if we could get something a bit stronger at scale for building. The charges in K2 have the same problem. I thought K2 had like a super duper robo port that uh well i was guessing just from the look of it that it was a big robo port so like a supercharger but it had homes for bots and i would guess that the construction range is longer as well is that right or are there also like smaller charging stations on top a small charger only port. Oh no. You're right, okay. So it's the fact that there's the mini charges as well. You want to be careful with those. And I'm guessing the super duper robo port is pretty late game. Alright, finally the good part. We are basically three quarters of the way done over here. Was that Penthus? That was Penthus. I got them mixed up. And we're almost there on this end. Fantastic. Go bots go. I still can't believe we were exactly one antimatter reactor short. A shame. It wouldn't have happened if we didn't break cryonite though. Uh, and we could have avoided breaking cryonite if I just had the kind of pragmatic paranoia that I absolutely should have when I had more cannons bringing us explosives. Uh, good to know though that we are overproducing delivery cannon capsules here. We can see from the rate of production of Cryonite Core Fragments um, exactly when we went wrong. Actually, I'm surprised there's a big dip here. Oh, this was probably... Hmm. 
that's actually zero. I was going to say this is probably when we reach the point of saturation, but no. I don't know why there's a big dip and then a lot and then a big dip. Strange transport system, only winning movers, not teams. <laughs> I mean, you can actually do something about the problem with the delivery cannon. The only reason this stuff got broken was because I made a mistake. It's not like the cargo rockets that just destroy cargo and crash all the time. And even when they work properly, you have to recycle cargo rocket sections all over the place. I never tested it. Can rocket launch from one star system to another? Yes. Yeah, I was quite surprised, actually. Um, you can, As far as I know, you can go anywhere with a cargo rocket. Um, I thought higher technology would be needed, but it just costs more liquid rocket fuel that they cram in there somehow. Um, and there is one sense in which cargo rockets are vastly superior to spaceships. Uh, spaceships have a travel time. Cargo rockets pretty much don't. They have a launch animation and a, like a, what, 10 to 30 seconds where they're sort of effectively don't exist. Um, but then they literally just appear at their destination with no delay. So... I don't know, at certain at sections of the, at a certain parts of the game, if you really want to go super far away, a cargo rocket would be the way to go. Alright, we're done here. And plastic. And probably about the same at Capellus at this point. Why is this one missing? Probably the same reason these ones were. Alright, let's remove superchargers. Let's remove the scaffolding. I wanted to use spaceship everywhere. But at last moment, I decided to use spaceships for liquids and supplies. Otherwise, I'll use rockets. One thing um, that I don't particularly like is how it actually takes more liquid rocket fuel to do the equivalent thing with a spaceship versus a cargo rocket. I think it should be the other way around. Whereas it takes like... For 500 stacks, it takes a cargo rocket a bit over 50k liquid rocket fuel to take off from Nalvis, which is... Uh, in this save, the radius is... 5692. Uh, our shuttles that have 16 chests, so like, I think it's 762 stacks, about 1.5 and a bit, um, times as much cargo space as a, a cargo rocket, but it takes four times as much liquid rocket fuel to take off. Holy moly, just posted a screenshot of the three... Roboports in DC. DC. Large one is ridiculous. Uh, DC. Oh, as in Discord. Am I blanking? Where Where is it? Uh. Also, what were we doing? We're almost here, surely. Just can't see how close we are to Foenestra. 
Is this done? This is done. Fantastic. Uh, we need to move them back again. One more. And we're here. No, we're not. I thought we stopped. We're about to stop. Just can't pinpoint the exact moment it's going to happen. Wrong Discord. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. How many tiles is that? So is the first one a regular RoboPort? Or I'm guessing the middle one is a regular RoboPort. And there's a mini one. Middle is regular. Okay. So this is like, what? 16 times the uh, construction area? Small one has no bot storage. Okay. We just arrived, finally. Let's park. And... Time to find out if this thing, this this whole city of power plant uh, can do 90 gigawatts consistently. Good luck, thank you. 200 logi and 400 construction area. And that's like radius or something, right? What are you going with that? Oh, that's my waste. Oh, it's taking it to storage. To stay there forever. Respawn what? Yeah, I don't even know... Uh, home. Okay. It likes to add this back in by default after I don't know what condition. I never ever want to press that. Um, I think it's there in case you get stuck somehow with space exploration. Unable to even kill yourself to respawn somewhere. Alright, so we are at 10 gigawatts. Um, I, I should definitely at least wait till this reaches 5,000. Avoid soft lock, yeah. Once it does reach 5,000, it's going to gobble up a lot of this water really, really quickly. Um, and we're going to have to add more water in. And the only way to make that faster is to change the limit on the water like an amount of time after we switch it on three point four K All right um why don't we put our Superchargers here-ish. Actually, let me just measure this. I want to make sure the radar construction pylons reach up here. Uh, probably, I guess. Thought your reactor build had killed you somehow? <laughs> no. Not yet. Alright, let's um... 
turn these off. Launch. 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 And launch. Oh. I didn't see how low on antimatter they were. That's a bit concerning. Are the others not gonna anchor? Oh, I turned off their derp. Derp, 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 derp. Switch this on. It's kind of a random chance, effectively, how quickly they respond. I think they check once per second. Oh, and don't forget to connect this wire. And then lay this out like so. Fantastic. How's our fluid looking here? Uh, we've actually... Oh, it's down here. Yeah, 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 there it is. It's suck it's gobbled up all of this water. I could steal some from over here. That would speed things up a bit. Just let that equalize a little. Yeah, I really do need to be patient. The sooner I turn this on, the sooner it crashes. If I don't wait to see water filling up the middle of this bit. Uh, I can help it along with... It's actually already inserting the ice quite quickly. Oh, did we run out of scaffolding? We did run out of scaffolding. Uh, that might be a good idea. Why don't we equalize the antimatter stream across these ships? new design feature. I don't know how they got so imbalanced. Actually, I have a I have a hunch as to how they got so imbalanced for fuel. Probably because antimatter stream wasn't being produced after Crynite crashed. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll help. Alright, I guess I'm leaving them there for a little while. Still no water over here. Um, I could steal some ice from one of the more established reactors. Speaking of which... Oh yeah, we've got tons of ice here. fluid in the middle. I think we have to wait till the steam fills up in here. It's kind of a lot.
Alright. Got enough to get home. Uh, this one's actually worrying me a little bit. Alright, we'll leave them alone for now. Let's check on Penthus and also check on the fuel in our ships. See, this is more what I would expect to see. Um, I guess we finished that row. Let's add one here. Use that as a measuring stick. This will be fine. And get ready to move our ships again. These ones won't do the same thing. Roboport is in the way. Very confused. Oh, and I did that again. Oops. Roboport is in the way. Roboport is in the way. It's like it's trying to clamp on top of the spaceship or something. Also, why does this thing have no power? That's actually really worrying. This is hot. This is hot. This is hot. This is hot. Do they have water? Yes. Are they not over full on water? Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Alright, this will be the final block here, I think. Final row. And how about some water? Not even a little bit. I think I saw it. Yeah, it, it, we're starting to see flickers of water in the middle. Not enough just yet. And... Oh, that's right. We're waiting to send these ones home. Uh, I'm going to risk it. I hope uh, we don't have trouble anchoring some of those other ships back at Nalvis. Still trying to catch up with the water. Do we have... We do have plenty of ice, right? We have 24k water ice. Okay. It's just a bit far for the bots to bring it. 
Why don't we give him a hand? It's more than enough throughput from the bots in the long run, but we want... Oops. We want our water now. That's more like it. All right, we're gonna have we're gonna take a slight leap of faith here. Start powering this thing up. If uh, considering this almost handled sixty gigawatts, if this can't for a while, I I don't know what to say. Good. Uh, apparently our peak, our theoretical peak is 146 gigawatts, that sounds about right, but realistically I'm thinking 90-ish. Um, if we add one more... Sooner or later we'll start to see the max production fluctuate. Uh, I think I just saw it jump. No, that was just the power consumption. It only took like... Fit uh, there it is. Max power is starting to flicker. Setting up Vulcanite processing sucks. Unfortunate. Uh, at this rate, I think we might easily be able to handle 90. Well, there's really no harm in trying a little early. If we overload it, it's just going to trip the breaker. And we'll be back down to 10 gigawatts and we'll give it some time. one 800 water ice It's your water. Get it now. Okay. Uh, it's looking pretty good. We're still seeing water get to the middle here. And we didn't give it time to saturate, so... I, I think this is probably it. I think we've got our 90 gigawatts at last. Of course, the longer we run this, the more... Antimatter canisters we're gonna burn. Um, not doing a whole lot of production lately. That's a worry as well. Currently doing about 80 per minute. So yeah, we don't want to maintain this for too long while we're just testing it. The ring an endgame thing or one of the hidden endings I've heard about? I think it is... I think it's one of the hidden endings. I don't know. Okay, I... I tentatively want to say that that's working. Considering we have zero antimatter stream uh, canisters in storage, it's all just in these requester chests. Uh, I really don't want to run this too much longer right now. So, yeah. We'll save up our fuel while we get other stuff fixed and so on. Alright, uh, let's see who's streaming Factorio, and we'll give someone a raid. I think I raided Mucky last, 
Tumbling did stop by earlier. It's been a minute since I raided JD. Let's give JD a raid. Inya? Uh, do you mean Inter? It's been a minute since I raided Inter as well. That's a good point. Uh, or at least more than once lately. Okay, enter it is. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions, by all means. And uh, till next time, stay safe. See you, Veldak. See you, Whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. Alright, let's drop in on Inter then.